Okay, the lady in the back room is all ready, so uh, welcome <coughs> to the Norfolk Planning Board meeting on December 10th, 2019. Please be advised that the meeting is being video and audio taped for consumption at home. <coughs> if you uh, wish to speak, please use a microphone. Um, make sure the little green light's on. It's not for us in the room, it's for the folks at home so that the sound gets properly recorded. All right, our first uh, item on the agenda is uh, 7 Hill Street Site Plan Special Permit for Outdoor Storage, Stormwater and Earth Removal Permits. It continued from um, our last meeting on the 12th of November. We have received a request for continuance. We need a motion to continue that until our January 14th meeting. At 7. At 7 p.m. So moved. Second. All right, all in favor say aye. 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 It is moved until January 14th. Uh, we have to wait until 7.15 to talk about the uh, Meeting House Road <coughs> Large Scale Ground Mounted Solar Array or Ground Mounted Solar Array. So in the meantime, we will talk about um, the sidewalks since we have Mr. McGee here with us, our DPW director. Uh, the issue is, uh, what is our sidewalk policy? Let me start with Rich to describe what we have in the... Uh, Did you want... Um, actually, we had... Uh, sorry. Uh, we, yeah, move up Alexander Estates to uh, my, seven. All right, well, that's sorry good. Keep, that. me on, keep me yeah, honest keep here. On, uh, keep me honest. honest. Then we'll do uh, Alexander Estates. And sorry, Bob. Got to okay. wait a couple of minutes. <laughs> All right, um, Alexander Estates, update on the completion and request for extension on time for completion. That's that's fi uh, fine as long as you use a microphone. Make sure the little green lights on. Can you hear me? Yep, okay. we can hear you even without the mic. But it's the folks at home that have the issue. I'm Ron Bonvi. I'm one of the managers. Of Alexander Estates. I'm here tonight to ask for an extension. Um, I've been interacting with both Bob and Richard and others in reference to completion. There was a laundry list. Uh, we have completed most of most of the laundry list. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, Richard, on the laundry list for um, patching of the roadway, which was done, completed today. Uh, I feel it came out really well. Um, that were th three or four manholes that were too high for plowing purposes and they are now at grade or at below grade and patched properly. Um, there was a question about some swales. Bob would like to have seen them flattened out a little bit or widened out so they would be easier to maintain. Mr. Koppelman is actually here, he's the resident. He would like to see his swale remain the way it is. I'm not speaking for him but he's nodding his head and he will maintain it the way it is. Um, there is one other swale uh, that is between the two streets that connects Oakview and, Oakview and Fredrickson. I called the engineer today to ask him, Richard had a question today, is, are those swales on grade? I asked him if he shot those swales, meaning uh, topoed them to understand if they're on grade. He said he did not, although he shot, he has shot the road various locations and other drainage areas locations and they were properly installed to the approximate locations and heights. So I am presuming they are correct. If Bob's or his predecessor wants them or Richard or someone else wants them flattened out, I am willing to do so. Um, we would have to do that in the spring uh, in the interest of ease of maintenance. And that was the reason they are, in my opinion, today to the plan but I'm open-minded to, I guess, widening them out so that they're not as steep and they're like this, so they're easier to maintain. Um, although, again, Mr. Koppelman's fine with his. Are they designed to the plan now? That is correct, they're built to the plan. Right. I'm open-minded to mm -hmm. opening them up, mm -hmm. um, only because, and I, I see why, the homeowner would be probably more willing to mow a lawn or grass that's this way instead of this way. Mm -hmm. um, that's probably a discussion, although when Bob was out there, we were out there with the design engineer, and he said we could do that to them. 
and it would not negatively impact the subdivision design. So uh, he was out there with Mr. American, if you remember Bob, he was there with us. So there was no negative impact if we did do that. Um, uh, let's see, the next things in the list. Um, my biggest request is going to be uh, a paving extension request, um, and we'll get into trees in a minute. But um, the reason why I'm asking for a paving extension request is I did have two pavers lined up. Bob and I were going over um, one of his requirements, which I fully understand, and most towns do require, or a lot of towns require, not all, but most, a monolithic berm. Um, and usually small contractors, mid-range contractors, the larger contractors have that piece of equipment, I'll call it, Bob, is that correct? Um, the smaller ones do not. Um, sometimes even the mid-sized ones do not. Um, one, one that I chose did not. The other one I did choose because I chose a backup, did, and fell through on me. Uh, at a meeting we had out on the site, I purported this to Bob. We had a conversation, Bob and Rich and myself. Um, others were there. And correct me if I'm wrong, I don't want to speak out of turn. Um, we were in like October or something. We were concerned about whether uh, we, wanted, uh, we wanted it to be warm enough so there's good adhesion. So it was in the best interest, we felt, to come back to the board and ask for an extension so that we get into a warmer win window, weather window. Um, and that was that conversation. And that's I'm asking for an extension on that specific area. I'm thinking maybe uh, August 31st, something of that nature, to have a month or two of warm, warm weather so I can make sure I line someone up with this specific. It's not specific. A lot of people do it, so I'm not trying to make it that it's not normal, but um, a paving machine with a berm machine, so it's monolithically done all in one time. Get it? Uh, and I'll set there. Mm -hmm. um, the biggest issue slash problem slash concern is tree planting. I have planted approximately 40 trees on the development at this point. Um, they are, in most cases, larger caliper trees than the plans require. They are trees that require machinery to plant them, dig the holes, and lift them. You cannot lift them. Two men could not lift them. Am I correct with that, Jimmy? Jimmy's here also. He's, he works for my company and has been overseeing the tree planting. Um, they are very large, different than a lot of developers. We chose to go out and buy them from nurseries, import them, and plant them ourselves. They being much bigger calipers, better in my opinion. That being said, a lot of people wanted different trees than, the, than what was on the plan, maybe. Um, we got into some conversation with some people, some people in the audience. Um, we have some problems in locations and that there might be some fences in the way. There might be a problem getting them to the locations. I'm sure these people will speak up and, and, and tell you what their thoughts are. I, I can tell you at this point I've planted 40, between 35 and 45 trees out in the site. There exist. And how many are on the plan, sir? There's probably another, I'm guessing, 25 or 30 on the plan. I have an additional <coughs> 20, approximate. I sent a list out. I have an additional 11, 15, 19. I have additional 20 trees sitting on the site right now. So there's probably another 30. So there's probably 10 more than what I have on the site. I came to a stop in the site. Why? Um, the trees that I have in the site, uh, I sent Jimmy down and he picked up another 10 or 15 a month ago, roughly. Um, and so they meet all the specs of the plan plus, not the specs, but in excess of the plan. Um, problem is, is some of the residents see them sitting there for three or four weeks, so they <coughs> don't want them because they feel they died. And I can tell you, talking to my landscape architect, who I use all the time, he says they go dormant and you can plant a tree you know, any time, um, and my attitude is as follows. When it comes time when I feel I'm done planting trees at this development, I would come to this board, <coughs> ask this board for release. I would presume this board would ask for someone to go out and inspect them. This and that person would have to certify, or whoever looks at them, to say that they're alive and well and thriving, <coughs> and I would then probably get a release. Well, if I have a dead tree, that person's going to say, no, he has a dead tree or trees, and you need to replace them before you get a release. I get it. So I would not plant a dead tree, I don't, and I have not asked for a, re, a, 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 you know, a release. I would not ask for a release. I'm not stupid enough to ask for a release. I'm not done. And how can you tell if they're alive right now? 
I get it. Been doing this for 48 years. So uh, I would wait till the springtime when they're all planted. They're all, in my opinion, alive. Ask for an inspection or ask for the release, and then this board would do it, whatever it sees fit to do to, to get that done. Um, so I, I guess to close, I don't want to take up too much of your time. Uh, there will be people that I'm sure that will speak up about this tree issue. I have planted in most instances, um, I was going over with Jimmy, if somebody is supposed to get four in their lot, I planted in sometimes five or six. There are some people in the audience that have not had their total trees planted, although we've got some issues. So I would help, I would ask this board maybe to help us through those issues. So there are two requests, a little bit of help through the issues of planting of trees. I'm ready, willing, and able springtime to, to finish those trees. Um, and I'm ready, willing, and able in uh, the summer to finish the asphalting uh, per the request of the existing DPW director and the meeting that we had out on the site with the monolithic berm. Uh, it is ready to do that. Um, and I guess I'll close at that point and answer questions, issues, or concerns that other people or you may have. Well, one question is, sir, you're asking for an extension <coughs> to, of completion of your, uh, this is not your first request for extension, is that correct? That is correct. And which one is it? Is it the second or the third? The second. The second. Okay. I, I believe it's the second. Yeah. All right. Okay. <coughs> uh, questions from the board here. No. Rich, any any uh, items that are on that punch list that uh, you want to bring up that uh, st you think uh, still need attention that Mr. Bono d didn't? Uh there is one, Rich. You, if I may, sir. So there's one that Rich brought up to me today. There are some rocks on the pathway to the open space. There were many rocks. I removed almost all of them. Jimmy is here. Um, one of the residents, Mr. Egan, who lives at 6, eight. Eight. 8, Oakview Trail, would like to have those rocks to create a retaining wall. So the rocks that are left are for a resident who lives there. And so- Are they on his property? They are on the easement an easement. Okay. So they probably should be moved, and I was not, I was not totally aware um, that they were still there. I called Jimmy today and said, Jimmy, are the rocks still there? And he said, yes, Mr. Egan wants those rocks. Mm -hmm. So I guess what we need to do is tell Mr. Egan he needs to get those rocks so that the easement is open up so that yep. people can get to the open space. <laughs> but I want you to know that I did not, double negative, I did not not remove them because I sent a machine and a truck to take them all out there's a, some still there, the ones that are still there, for someone who lives in the neighborhood. Okay. I want you to understand that. I'm, and I'm sorry about that. So. I understand that. Yeah. Okay. Anything else, Rich? Uh, I think it, to recap, we, uh, I know there's, uh, I know there are residents here from the development, and there's some that aren't. So I think uh, there's extension being requested. I think we really need to get this thing wrapped up I mean, there's uh, I'll say it, we've talked about this with Ron that it's it's time to finish there's an expectation that it's time to move on I think um, we need to kind of watch it a little bit closer mm -hmm. I think coming into the new year to touch base to make sure we don't I know you were suggested August I think that might be a little bit far out there we could talk about this but the second of temperature yeah I really don't want to have this uh, linger on, actually. So I think there's a bunch of reasons. One is that so the residents can kind of assume their normal life and not have to <coughs> worry about the road being completed and so forth. I think they're probably about ready to get to that point, or well past that point. But um, there are punch list items that we do need to. There's a trail mark that needs to be in. There's so there are cleanup things that. We won't get into it tonight, but mm -hmm. there are punch list yep. items that need to be completed as part of the subdivision. Um, what's, um, what's the status of the bond? So we have, uh, he has not requested a reduction. I think we're holding $123,000. Around 103,004, something like that. 103,004? Okay. Um, right now, 103,363,86. Okay. So that is in place. He hasn't requested, and it's not time to nor either. Sure. Um, we do have. So the, the, you'll get into it shortly. I'm, I know the neighbors will chime in. So the, the trees are, one neighbor is concerned from a safety issue about trees that are in between the house lots. And yep. We have met on site, discussed that. 
The other uh, family here, uh, 27 Fredrickson, is, is more about the trees that were uh, on the plan to be planted and getting them done, and then also I think the means and method how to get that done so that you know they have improvements in the yard and so yeah well we'll open it up for discussion from that. members of the um, audience here in a moment but when I you think finish. <clears throat> for now I think we're uh, I did see the Bob by the way did you see the did you swing back at the end of the days no okay I saw them in the middle of doing the patchwork uh -huh. I went there before I came here and it came out really nice okay good really right. nice. I haven't had a chance to take a look at it but yeah, it seemed that was done. Okay. Right. <coughs> I believe Jimmy was taking photos too, take right? Oh, perfect. Okay, so we can look at those later. But sure. for now, I'll, I'll, I'll chime in when appropriate. I guess. Okay, sure. <laughs> All right. Any further questions from board members? No. All right. Someone in the audience wish to uh, make a comment or two? Please grab a mic, identify yourself, and uh, and. Uh, There's two, yeah, there's two here on the floor. Should be anyway. Hi, I'm Carol Thibodeau at 27 Fredrickson Road. Uh, Ron Bonvi mentioned earlier about the fence that's in our yard. I want to address that by saying that in 2017 and in 2018 and in 2019, we requested uh, updates on when our trees were going to be installed because we were thinking about putting a fence in. We, before we put the fence in in 2019, addressed that again and said, we're going to be putting a fence in. When are you going to have the trees in so that there is no issues with the fence? We were told after the fence was put in that the trees were coming and that they were going to put them in. And then there were concerns about the fence and not being able to get equipment into the fence and install the trees that they were originally planning in it installing. What I'll also say is that we originally have 17 trees on our plan. They did install three trees that were accessible by the street and didn't need any equipment getting into the fenced in area. Mm -hmm. However, at the time, they did not have all of our trees to begin with. We had to subsequently remind him that there were 14 other trees that were required in our yard. And he had to get the um, plan uh, confirmed by the planning, um, Richard here, and wasn't understanding how many trees we needed. So he does have a point that we now have a fence and that equipment can't get beyond the fence. However, he had had ample time prior to that with our requests for the trees to be installed. If you were queen of the world, how would you solve that problem? We agreed at, um, to um, resolve the issue to, for the planning committee to have the trees in our yard as planned for him to put smaller trees in with hand digging. And, we and were told that those were going to be done in November, and that did not happen. Right. May, may I answer that? Sure, please. Here's a mic. I'm oh, sorry. Sorry. So to take down existing, uh, I'm guessing, 20, 30 foot trees and replace them with trees other than those trees. It's in an email. Mm -hmm. Yes. I said to Richard, Richard, do you want me to take down these existing trees because I don't have a right to and replace them with these new trees? The conversation was, geez, it, and I don't want to put where again, doesn't really make a lot of sense to take down a 20, 30 foot tree and replace it with a new tree that you're going to plant. So at that point in time, I don't believe the fence was up at that time. So at that point in time, uh, the conversation went back and forth about doing that. that. Finally, the decision was made, and I don't know if it was you, me, both of us, whatever. It doesn't make sense to do that. At that point in time, we went to how are we going to, now the fence goes up, how are we going to plant the new trees? I recommended to go to smaller trees so that a person could dig them mm -hmm. and a person could carry them. Mm -hmm. You'll see that email. Mm -hmm. They agreed to that. The last email was, no, I want the bigger trees. I don't want the smaller trees, and I want a piece of equipment over to bring those trees. The last email was, I want the normal size trees. 
Okay. Uh, can, can we, fair enough, can, can we uh, point to the appropriate lot here that yep. we're talking about? Yes. So it is these trees right here. All right. Now, can we zoom in? Betts, can you zoom in on that upper uh, corner there so we can all get a better picture of what uh, we're talking about? Here. Yeah. There are, there are existing trees right here. The question started with. What kind of trees are they? Pines? I think they're pines and they're pretty tall trees. Yeah. And so, the, so this is why this went into a problem. Because remember, a lot of these trees are planted. Why did this go into a problem? Went into a problem because let's take these down, whatever they are, one, two, three, whatever it is, and replant them. Mm -hmm. The question was, can I do that? And it's in a no cut zone for me. We, no, I think, please, if, if I'm wrong, don't do that. Don't do that. And so we can't do that. At that point in time, we have a, we, we sit there and say, all right, can we do smaller caliper trees? One person, carry them or two, dig a hole, put those in. We'll start that. Yes. Last email was, no, I want the, I want what you, the trees you've been doing, which are calipers like this, that two people in this room couldn't pick them up. Yeah, yeah. All right. Well, let's back up for a second here. There are existing trees there. Yeah, are, are those on the drawing representative of the existing trees, or are those no, intent? Those are no, those are proposed. All right. Well, the plan, sir, then requires that you remove those trees and plant new ones. That's what the plan says, doesn't it? Okay, I'm more than happy to do that. I understand that, but is that a solution that you want? That is a fine solution. When the discussion about removing the trees occurred, Richard asked why we would want to put new trees where those exi existing trees are. We talked about how tall those trees are, and during storms, they overhang the um, electric lines, and that if we were to install new trees, it might be best to move them back a little bit further so that they did not impede in the electric lines. Fair enough, but I, I, if I'm hearing you right, you're in favor of removing the existing trees and planting new trees. Yes. Now, where's the fence that we're talking about? So I, those other trees, may I approach the drawing? Sure, by all yeah, means. Yeah, I, I don't. I don't by know. All means, by all means. It's her fence. Let her show exactly us where. Exactly right. I'd be wrong. <laughs> so the grouping, the grouping of trees right there yeah. are all outside of the fenced area. However, there is um, ledge there, and the discussion was can we not put them all there because of the ledge but can we put some further back here so that there was privacy for the n existing neighbor and their pool area which was the original intention and then just spread those trees out but where is the fence show me the f where the, the fence the fence starts about here yeah goes about a uh, foot maybe 2 feet before I think the it property goes like line this. And like that. Yep. Okay. All right. And what it, kind of fence is it? Um, in the front, it's Wood. the PVC, um, the white PVC, and then in the sides, it's black chain link. Black, link. black chain link. I see. I, okay. I might be able to bring it. If, yeah. the, if, the, if the homeowner is willing to accept a smaller caliper tree, uh, I'm not talking here. Yeah, 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 yeah. You're talking over there. there. Yeah. I'm fine. I'm, we're all set because they tell me I'll get the amount of trees we've got on the plan. If they want the smaller caliper where one person can dig and one person can install, I believe the issue's over because I will do exactly that. Is that acceptable to you? That's acceptable. Um, what I would ask, though, is that the neighbor for the existing house, they were part of the decision to have those trees for privacy on their side and for um, traffic lights coming into their house. I would just like to have them be okay with that decision as well. well that's, that's up to you. That's not up to the planning board. The okay. The <clears throat> planning board deals with the plan we're dealing with here. Uh, <clears throat> and if you're willing to deviate from the plan and move a few of those trees because of ledge issues a little bit further back, that's acceptable to us. And change uh, the caliper to a, yeah, one person being able to dig and install. That, that's fine. And if they're agreeable to that, we're agreeable to that. Yes, we're fine with Pretty that. sure. I have to take a vote, but uh, I'm pretty sure we could get a vote. To what I do want to add, if I may, is that we are in the midst of filing for a court, um, small claims court with him, and I do not want to lose the opportunity if he does not end up putting the trees in to have that done. 
So. Um, well, that's up to, again. That's up to you outside mm -hmm. of the, the jurisdiction of this planning board. But anyway, let's continue with another part of the issue. <clears throat> there are existing trees on the corner, some tall pines, and uh, you've said you're you're acceptable if, to you if, you if those are removed and, and we plant the trees that are shown on, on the uh, plan. Is that right? Yes. And this gentleman has said he's willing to do that, and yes. he's shaking his head. So is that issue settled? The issue is settled, yes. Okay. I'm all set with that. All right, good. Uh, all right, anyone else in the audience have a, any issues that you'd like? Yes, ma'am. Hi, I just want... As long as the green light's on. As long as the green light's on, you're okay. I just want to say hello. Um, Sally Vesti, number nine, Fredrickson. I am not in a butter. I don't live there, but I want to say thank you so much. Um, it's been a couple of decades of, um, um, of Mr. Matulowitz and seeing this come to fruition. So I want to say um, thank you. the old house that was there. Correct. Got all the pictures. But what I do want to um, emphasize two things. I want to represent the open space. And um, Ben, and if, if Rich mm -hmm. gets one more email from me, I like to walk down. They walk down there a lot. I just want it done. We're kind of, you know, we're just, we're done. So sooner rather than later, and I think that you've heard that, yep. and the open space obviously is not clearly marked. The rocks were in the side and doesn't make it. We, we, we let this go through Here. the open space. It yep. looks great on the map, but in, in true form, you're schlepping over someone's lawn and over the river and through the woods, and pretty soon a fence is going to go up there by the abutters because they aren't aware there's open space. So we need to let other people, other than just the Fredericks and Road Oakview Trail people, know that this is great for them. And, that's how you let mm -hmm. the subdivision go through. So mm -hmm. thank you very and much. That's where there's a couple of rocks for Mr. Egan sitting right now. So okay. Right. Yeah. Is the uh, is, where is the f access to the open space? Is it off uh, Oakview? That is correct. Yeah. Yeah. It's of off Oak of Oakview. In between, there's a. Um, it's not marked. So and now the lawns have been built, and there'll be toys out there and everything. Uh, so it's not to the casual. Richard observer. has asked me to mark it. Yeah. There yeah. you go. Right. Yes. I and I can do so. And like I said, there was a bunch rocks in it. We've yep. taken them out, but the ones that need to be removed. Right. The other thing we did talk about is actually <coughs> clearing some of the understory there so that it's, you know, similar. So it looks like there's a pathway to go through there to make yep. it. I'm willing to do that also. I will. Yeah. Jimmy's in the audience right now. He'll be the person doing it. We did talk about that because then, that th then it looks at least clear to somebody sure. walking. That is here. correct. We yeah. did talk about it. Okay. There. Good. Thank yeah. you. Anyone else uh, wish to, uh, sir, grab my mic. Hi, I'm Jeff Koppelman, uh, 14 Oakview Trail. Um, I sent a letter, I think a couple months ago, about the trees uh, surrounding our property. Um, there are quite a few dead trees or trees that appear to be dying, um, basically around the perimeter of our property. Well, um, hang on, let's yep. make sure we know. What, well, there we go. We've got to crank that up. Right here. No, there's no cut zone here. Okay. Yeah. Right, yes. Right and on the other side, too by the easement. There are some there. So there's some here, some here. Okay, yep. So during the construction of our neighbors at 8 Oakview, uh, one of the trees actually happened to fall on their house, right? So we're concerned that over time, the rest of these trees that are clearly either dead or on their way out are going to fall on one of the homes. You know, it's obviously a safety issue. So we've just been asking, can we can we have Mr. Bonvi cut them down and replace them with smaller, you know, more appropriate trees for our neighborhood? Well, let's see, there's two questions there. For one, was he willing to cut them down, and two, will he replace them? So let's ask them in sequence. Did you ask him those questions? Yes, I have. Okay, so what's your response, sir? Uh, as, as long as it's in this, <coughs> as long as it's in, oh, sorry, thank you. <laughs> um, little concern about proximity of them. I think between the two of us, we'll work them out as to, there's a couple that could be a little bit of a problem taking down, but I think we'll work that out. The two of us will work that out, and... My point is the two of us will work that out. Right. I feel confident if you, but it's in a no-cut zone for me. Well, let's see. Uh, I think the board would consider, from a safety point of view, the board would consider allowing removal of some of those tall pines. <clears throat> I think that's what they are. Are they not, yeah, sir? Some of them yeah. are oaks, um, I think, though, Jeff. As far as the, the, uh, the planning of replacement trees, I don't think the, the, the developer has any obligation to do that. I think he'd be willing to cut the trees, that's what I'm hearing, from a safety point of view, and I think... If he's willing to do that, that saves you a lot of money instead of hiring a tree service to do that. Um, but I'm, I don't feel he's obligated to, personally, I don't feel he's... Mr. Koppelman has been very good to me, and I will work that out with Mr. Koppelman. Well, if he's I feel willing very to do that, 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 that'll happen. then uh, more power to you. <clears throat> 
He's been very fair with me, and we'll work between the two of us. We'll work that out. If you allow me to cut the trees that he's requested to cut, uh, we got to get the vote of the board to do that because that's a modification of the plan here. Is that all right, Rich? Yeah, it is. Uh, all right. So uh, <clears throat> we would ask both of you gentlemen to submit a plan to us to show us which trees you're going to cut. Show us how many trees are there, which ones are going to be cut, which ones are going to be left. All right. Um, all right, so I need, uh, the chair will entertain a motion to um, make a minor modification subject to the, the uh, plan being submitted to the, to the board to remove uh, certain pine trees on both sides of, what is the address, 14? 14. 14 Oakview. <clears throat> Do we have a, uh, a motion? Um, okay. so yes, sir. There are a couple, there are some oak trees. Uh, oak and pine, then. <clears throat> Do we have a second? Second. <laughs> All those in favor say aye. 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 All right. So, gentlemen, work it out and submit a plan to us and show us what you're going to do. So Thank you. Continue to next meeting. Uh, yeah. We, we prep. Oh, no. We got to talk about the uh, continuance that the gentleman wants. All right? Yeah. Extension. Okay. Ext yeah, extension. Yeah. All right. What is uh, you mentioned? He mentioned August. You thought that was a little too uh, generous. What would you propose? <coughs> I like it gets warmer than earlier than August right I yeah. think yeah um, I just know what happens with asphalt companies and I just don't want to you ask me how many extensions I asked for I don't want to be coming back here and asking for a third well that's probably because you wouldn't get one sir there you go so that's being said yeah but I, I also don't want to have it slip either no I agree so yeah. if we all agree so. and that it's up to you I don't Philly June. I'm good with June. Ooh. June 30th. I don't think I can make June. What do you mean you can't make it? Come on. Wow. Well, I mean, you've been around doing it. Here you go. I don't think I'm going to make it. I don't think you like what I'm going to say, but June at the latest, especially if you're going to backfill and try to get uh, germination of, of uh, loom. I wish I could be here because you can get an asphalt company to do this, and I understand that you want to get one with a monolithic berm attachment and stuff like that, but the aggregates are... P.J. Keatings, Riley's, I'm sure you can get something. But, uh, you know, you could give them till June, but I would say you'd want to get this done in April, uh, not yeah. April, but yeah. May, May, right probably. around there. Right. You can do it. <laughs> okay. I mean, I, I do a lot of roads. I do, you know, miles of road. I can tell you it's going to be awful tight if not impossible. So I just want that to be part of the record. I don't think I can make it. I really don't think I can make it. Well, sir. I think you've got to give it the old college try. All right, let's uh, have a motion to uh, extend <clears throat> the completion of the, of the project uh, development until uh, June 30th. Do we have a motion? So moved. Do we have a second? Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Sure the day. Thank you, uh, Thank you. residents. Do we need a vote on the modification for the trees for that? Um, I'm going to leave this. Yeah, we probably do. Uh, yeah, why don't you maybe. make a motion to that effect? For, for 27 and and the cutting the trees. Go ahead. Right. So, well, we, we, t we did a motion for cutting the trees, but yeah, we, we did. didn't do a motion for modifying. That's true. Yeah, 27. Thank you. For uh, 27, I yep. forget the, the street name. But Fredrickson. So do we want to amend the, well, we can't amend it now. We can no. have a separate motion. We can make a separate motion. Yeah. Go ahead. Okay, so uh, let's make a motion for what was, 27 Fredrickson. 27 Fredrickson to remove and replace the trees in the front and then use smaller caliper trees spread Relate. out in the back to avoid the, the ledge. Yep. Do we have a second? Second. All in favor of that motion? Say aye. 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 Okay. Thank you. Any other comments on... Uh, Alexandra states before we move on. Okay. Gary? But they were coming back with a plan. To They're coming this. back with a plan. But there's no data. There's no data on that. No, there isn't. No. <laughs> Probably should have put one, but we didn't. <clears throat> All right. Um, meeting house? Gentlemen, uh, Meeting House Road. 
you here to speak to me in House Road? Yes, sir. Okay. You're on. So, uh, hi again. Um, my name is Daniel Serber, uh, Development Director with Next Grid Inc. Um, we're, uh, you guys have seen us before here um, on this project. Uh, it's a 200 kilowatt AC, 250 kilowatt DC uh, solar facility at 41 Meeting House uh, adjacent to the condominium development. Um, since the last time you heard us, which I believe was two full months ago, um, we got our, our peer review completed by Beta Group. Um, and um, Nate here is uh, going to speak to you guys about some of the changes that we've made on the project, um, and uh, including uh, the shift in road and um, other, other drainage things that have been adjusted. Thank you. Uh, again, for the record, my name is Nate Collins. I am principal with CLC Design. Um, just to kind of go back to our last hearing on, I believe it was the 8th of October, uh, we were tasked with a few items um, from that meeting at the request of the board and some um, abutters and uh, also one of the property owners. Uh, one of those was to look at relocating the access drive to try to maximize their amount of green space off the side of the road. Um, another item was a request to stake the proposed fence line. Uh, in addition, it was asked that we do some cross-sections of some of the nearby abutters just so we could give a kind of diagrammatic uh, view of, of what this proposed development would look like in terms of impact on them. Um, so as it relates to the roadway, uh, we did do some additional survey. Um, Betsy's trying to rotate it. Okay. So uh, this is the, the section plan, but we'll, it yep. will still give you an idea. Yep. So instead of coming off of the existing driveway, uh, what we've done is we've, we've provided entrance between the gazebo and the existing transformer to the uh, existing pump house. So access, uh, we've maintained this lawn area, uh, and access would come directly off of that. We've still maintained the driveway down here, which will provide future access for the town to build a um, driveway to the water tower. Mm -hmm. uh, so that was the modification that was made as it relates to the driveway. Well, wait a minute. Before you move on to <coughs> the, uh, the, the turn radius there at that, at that corner mm -hmm. looks pretty tight. Um, is the uh, fire department happy with that? Can they get a piece of apparatus in there if they need to? So uh, we, we just heard back today from the fire department. Uh, they reviewed it. Uh, they did not have concern with the driveway itself. They just wanted to make sure we maintained access kind of around the um, solar array itself. And currently we're proposing 15 feet between the edge of any solar panel and the edge of um, our proposed okay. fence. All right. I don't know if Richard. But yeah, so I did forward. Uh, So they, w they wanted to have, uh, as Nathan said, access around the perimeter <clears throat> for a smaller squad type truck in case of a uh, brush fire. Mm -hmm. That was really what they wanted to be able to have. So, Smaller truck. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Well, I'm sure a smaller truck can also make that corner there, which looks a little tight. <clears throat> it's, it's greater than a 90 degree turn, so it's similar to someone taking a 90 degree off a roadway. It's actually a, a less of an angle. Okay. Yeah. Please proceed. Um, so in terms of the cross sections, what we did was we, we did some additional survey using uh, LIDAR. Uh, you know, it's not an actual on the ground survey, but it's, it's accurate yep. in pur for purposes of what we're trying to achieve. And we ran three cross sections um, from 32, I'm sorry, 30, 32, and 36 Union Street. Yep. Um, these kind of dark lines depict, um, and again, I just chose this kind of arbitrarily from uh, what's approximate midpoint of each house, what their, their view would be. Mm -hmm. um, so on the next page, if you can scroll down, might have to rotate that one too. It's the top, top one. Yeah. Sorry. 
So working down the page, and again, so um, we ran a cross section, it's approximately 550 feet. Uh, what this represents is uh, the existing house, and I didn't go out there and measure the height, but I used a, a height to this uh, bottom of the roof of 25 feet, mm -hmm. um, just an average two-story house. And what this represents is the elevation change of approximately 65 to 55 feet to what would be the top of this um, top of this ridge and where uh, on that section line the first edge of that solar panel would be. In addition, um, I, I carried trees just a little bit past our actual property line, but the, the existing tree line actually runs all the way down almost to the house. So um, one thing I did after our meeting, uh, we, we met with the town to go over the peer review comments, was I actually walked the site and as, as I noted, we've, we put stakes along that fence line. Mm -hmm. uh, and even in today's vegetated state, you know, a lot of those vegetation has come down, um, visibility to those houses is still very limited. Uh, so certainly during majority of the year, that view will be almost non-existent to um, any part of this solar array. Uh, the, the chain link fence you talked about, uh, black vinyl coated? Black vinyl coated, six foot high. Yeah, but not, uh, not with the slats, right? Right now, we're not, we're not proposing slats. Um, they become maintenance issues. Yeah, uh, yeah I understand, but, but you're not cert, proposing slats. We're not okay. proposing that, no. I understand, okay. Um, where would the fence, uh, on that cross section, where would the fence appear? It's essentially, we're right at the tree line. Right at the tree line. Yeah, okay. so this, this represents the, the limits of clearing. Um, so that's the fence in this instance, in, in all cross sections, would be right at approximately that tree line. Okay, good. Um, so, so then working your way down, um, as, as you work down Union Street, again, 32, um, it's actually elevation-wise, it's almost, they wouldn't even be able to see it. The ridge almost mm -hmm. cuts it off for them. Yep. Um, and can't see further down, but it's a similar situation um, in terms of view. I would say the potential impact uh, would be uh, the worst for 36. But again, there's probably 300 feet of a vegetated um, forest, if you will, that's going to remain in place. Um, do Rich, have, have we had a chance to uh, provide these these uh, drawings to the neighbors on these three locations? The uh, the gentleman at 38. Of course, that wasn't actually his house, but he's the one that's always seen the cross section so far. Okay. All right. uh, okay. I don't know. Are you? I'm 36. 36. Okay. No, I didn't get a chance to email. Right. The 36. And just again, for purposes of the the sections, I only carried a tree height of 20 feet. Um, a lot of those trees there are, are probably even greater than that. Mm -hmm. um, I was I was trying to show kind of worst case. What kind of trees are they? Deciduous or pine? It's a mix. It's a mix. It's a mix. Okay. Yeah. Okay, thank you for that. Yeah. Keep, keep going. Um, so some of the other items were, you know, we did receive uh, a list of review comments. Uh, we, met, we met with the town and the review engineer. Um, I, I believe we addressed most of those. I know we received a letter uh, today just with a yeah. couple other outstanding uh -huh. items um, looking for time of concentration calculations. Um, up to the top of my head, I haven't had a ton of time to review it, but um, test bit. Uh -huh. Test bits, correct. Yeah, are there any um, contentious issues here where you totally disagree and, and uh, going to require the board to arbitrate? No, so. there, there were a few waiver requests. Um, a lot of them were to do with uh, plan requirements, whether it be scales or, um, and then we did request a conditional approval as it relates to test bits. Um, we, by the time, we received the review comments on the 18th of November. Mm -hmm. We tried to schedule a contractor to get out there to perform test bits. Mm -hmm. um, haven't been able to get those done before today. Uh, our assumptions as it relates to soils, we've, we've carried a pretty low infiltration rate of 0.27 inches an hour, uh, which is conservative in yeah. I get my professional opinion. Uh, so we, we asked for a conditional um, approval in the sense that we would perform those test pits prior to any actual construction of the facilities just to confirm our assumptions. Yep, all right. Yes. So 
Phil, do you have any comments? Or I'm sorry, Gary. No, no, I, I, I was just trying to remember reading it through. I didn't, I, I'm recalling that maybe runoff from the road was an issue over time. So um, if you can go to, I guess, the, the section plan in the show. We, um, as part of the review comments, we did revise some of the grading on the roadway. Uh, it's, it, it, this isn't the grading plan, but we created a swale. Um, and one of the requests was that we just add, instead of just having that run directly over this gravel drive, um, to put pr probably just a pipe kind of underneath there with a, a riprap, um, just so we're not running that stormwater directly over. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the applicant is not opposed to doing that. Uh, in addition, uh, to prevent runoff, uh, continued runoff down this way, we've created a swale on the eastern side of the clearing. Uh, also to help direct runoff to this detention pond. There was also a comment in today's letter just to add uh, uh, essentially a level spreader or an area of riprap at the end of that swale. And again, I, I don't want to speak for the applicant, but I don't think that's an issue. Yeah. All right. Uh, anything else, sir? No, that's, that's it, sir. Okay. Yeah. Uh, questions from the board? Phil, anything else you'd like so, to add? So I just want to clarify one point. Yep. Um, B1, we had talked about a green belt. So I know we discussed this and there was right. no structures within 100 feet. Correct. So this, this I didn't convey that to, to my colleague who right. did the review. So okay. So that's, I would disregard my our, our comment on that. Okay. Um, and okay. then I, I think we should probably talk about some of the waivers. Okay. Uh, just to make sure that sure, you ahead. guys are, 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 are good with that. Yeah, um, go ahead. So the first one I have was uh, S9. It had to do with <coughs> a lot of content that is required for a site plan. Um, Rich, what, what's your comment on, on that? There's a bunch of paragraphs here that uh, he's referring to that would be waived, apparently. Um, I think it's just a bunch of information we typically yeah. have. Yeah. So I don't know if any of those are onerous to get. Well, that's, that's what we got to find out. So uh, we probably need to take that offline since there's so darn many of them here. There's probably 10 of them. Yeah. Right. Every, every, the original comment he just referenced a section, and I haven't had time to go through each one of these yeah. actual yeah. ones. Yeah, all right. Well, we'll do that offline and sure. and see if, it, if we would be willing to waive those, or if there's an issue in there, we'll bring it back to you. Understood. Why is there a request to waive them? <coughs> I think just given, um, you know, most, a lot of, site plan or subdivision rules and regulations are associated with large-scale developments, roadways, et cetera. Um, there's really not much to this project as it relates to infrastructure and um, subdivision of land. So that's, that's the request, or that's what the request was based off. Yeah, probably one of those is a requirement for a sidewalk, for example. Yeah. <coughs> Using the sidewalk. So S SW12 also, site yeah. distance, but you, you don't even have access off of, of a main road, right? No, so, no. I mean, so even, I, I even the original proposal was just off a, technically a driveway, but now we're we're even further off of that. SW12? S S12, sorry. S12. Yeah, so. Page uh, 10, 6, page 6. <laughs> requirements associated with the standards for a driveway per your bylaws. Right. Um, again, this... Um, is going to have very, very limited traffic. Yep. Um, so. Yep. Okay. Um, yeah. There's probably just need to go through it. Yeah. But just need it's to go probably through. not really applicability for this right. type of project right. with right. the regulations. Sure. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> anything else, Phil? Any others? Um, still got to be safe driveway. Still got to be safe. No, yeah, I, yeah. I think that's it. Yeah. Okay, thank you. All right, uh, anyone in, in the, the audience? Not really. No. No. Okay. no that's a, yeah. All right, any other questions from board members here? No. no. In the audience, Bob. 
<clears throat> Sorry to come in to this late. I had some information, and I even had a set of drawings, uh, a conceptual drawn up, just to give a little history that uh, this here is the water property and the water tower. Yep. And currently, for us to access this, we need to go up through the condominiums around, and we pay an easement fee for this. It's a considerable amount of money, so it's actually what we have on here is antennas maybe from Verizon or Medcon or something like that, and they give us some annual fee for that, and 20% of that is spent because we need to access that road, mm -hmm. just to give us some history. Yeah. Well, we took over the wastewater treatment plant, and we worked with the condominium association. We came up with a handshake agreement, providing our selectmen would go along with it, and, and they need to be informed as well. But, for instance, um, this is an easement right here. I'm surprised it wasn't addressed, but this is crossing a water easement right here. So this is a potential for us to gain access to the to the water tower, mm -hmm. whereas we come around the other side right now and pay for it. Um, this doesn't squash this project at all. Actually, it's, it looks like a good project. But um, I had a set of drawings, uh, conceptual drawn up, showing uh, us coming in here and creating a little bit of parking, which the condominium people seem to need. With that, they wouldn't contest us carving a road and going up into this thing here, eliminating the fee that we pay annually. It's good business. And in the long run, a savings for us. And not only that, but it allows for privacy that uh, right now we go right up in the back of the condos and right by bedrooms and stuff like that. We don't want to do that. So I have a set of drawings. I'll forward to the board through Rich if possible so that you can see it. I don't think it's going to make a real big impact, but it shows the driveway coming in here. Maybe Would this you is be still okay good. with the driveway as they propose it here? Well, um, I think what we can do is join forces, and at their expense, um, <laughs> continue this road up this way. Whatever we can do in partnership. No, I understand, but I mean, they they proposed because of some other discussions. They proposed to ch change it from coming off there to coming around that little curve. Right here. Yeah. Yeah. This is kind of tight. So yeah, we, we maintain this pump station. There's, this is where this is a concrete slab where they yeah. have a gazebo and they receive their mail. Whether we came in through here, which is a possibility, yeah. I'd, I'd like to ask Mr. Glosser why he didn't suggest that. Yeah. He has good reason. I don't know if there's utilities under there. I don't know what research you've I, done. I'm, I'm sure it was a potential proximity to, um, you know, originally we had a it microphone, shown. Microphone, microphone, not, not for us, but for, oh, you got it. Okay. I have it. Got it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> originally we had that access drive shown off of that drive and yeah. it was at our last meeting they requested so th this driveway is 16 feet wide right. so uh, in terms of you know one-way traffic it's it's yeah. pretty adequate sure. I'm not sure the size of trucks you're looking to get up there but well, I'm pretty confident for your information that this is nothing but a it's gonna be a gravel driveway gravel not right. paved correct 12 right. inches 12 inch 12 inches thick yes that was one of the review comments the, the benefit of this driveway is probably just for the construction of this that's where it's gonna get more most of its use after that, I don't know who it's going to be, a car or something just going down for maintenance, right. yeah. cutting the grass, or whatever yeah. you do there. So no issue with this. I wouldn't think sure. you would. But you are crossing an easement. We do have a proposed parking mm -hmm. thing here. I have to cover it with the selectmen to see, or it will be Barry, actually, to see. So that's, that's um, stuff on top of this presentation here that I can't blame you didn't know about it. But, uh, but you would propose to, get, to access the, the town water property through that through that easement, right? Right. 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 Yeah. Okay. Right. We want to break up through. I don't know what these grades look like right now. Yeah. So when we pretty, topo it, it's pretty steep. Um, it could be that we come up here, uh, but if it is steep, it's still, it's a you know, it's a one-time expense and mm -hmm. will forever okay, never so have to pay. Presumably, that. Uh, someone from the condo association and Barry uh, will show up at one of our next meetings and. Right. Uh, Hopefully these gentlemen will be here at the same time and we can share plans and talk about it and maybe finalize it. Sounds good. Thank you, Bob. Do you have any objections to what he's proposing? I do not. No. Okay. Do you have any? He's proposing to, to use our road and, yeah. and branch yeah. off of it, right? Yeah, yeah. you are 100% fine with us. Okay. <clears throat> um, all right. Any other questions from the board? No, other than to ask Bill to look into that easement, crossing the easement. Yeah, yeah. For beta. So. Are you changing the grades there? Um, the the grading does get modified slightly. Yeah. Um, but fortunately, it's it's flat actually till right about where that easement starts, um, and then it drops off pretty quickly. But we're trying to maintain the grade as most. There's no retaining.
We just don't want to get it closer to the water line. So we don't want any right. cut. No, if anything, we're if anything we're filling in that spot. All right. Um, anyone in the audience uh, care to make a comment? Hey, um, Chris Baker, 38 Union Street. Um, just got kind of a list of, I guess, questions to go through. Um, number one was that I, I didn't see any updated plans on the site before coming down. I didn't know if there was anything in addition to what was sent. But has there been any changes to the retention pond plans, elevations? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, those were modified based on um, review comments that we received. Okay. Peer, peer I, I, I noticed the last time that the broad crested overflow weir elevation was actually higher than the surrounding outside retention pond. I assumed it was probably a typo. It may have, it may have been a typo. Okay. Because yeah. yeah, the pond would overflow before the before the weir did. Um, then. You know, I, I kind of take issue with the um, the waiver for the geotechnical investigations and hydraulic conductivity, and it's it's kind of a cyclical approach to it. Where have you gone on to MassGIS Oliver system and looked at the geophysical resources <coughs> for the area? Yep. So that shows this entire area, basically from the retention pond or detention pond or whatever we're calling it, down to all of our houses along Union Street, is an area of known abundant outcropping and shallow bedrock. So my concern is that if we have a retention pond there and it's being dug in, and now with the peer review comment of one foot of freeboard at a 100-year storm, I assume you have to dig deeper to achieve that. Um, you've potentially got less distance or less depth from the bottom of the retention pond to bedrock, allowing for less infiltration before it hits bedrock, runs along the bedrock slope. Um, depending on how shallow that bedrock is, you could have a potential for sliding, for slope failure. So in this instance, I would assume that geotechnical investigations to at least determine the depth of bedrock, not necessarily the hydraulic conductivity, would be kind of important as a condition of approval for this project. Um, better yet, if it shows shallow bedrock, even some sort of a two-dimensional slope stability analysis would be beneficial to kind of I don't know, put, it, put us at ease that it's not going to cause some sort of a, uh, a slope failure during 50, 75, you know, 100-year storm. The, yeah, this, this um, area that you're concerned about um, is downhill, but it's all heavily treed, is it not? It, it is, yes. Vegetated. Yeah. yeah. So right. we're just if I can respond to that. So what, what we did, um, again, be, because we didn't have actual geotech test bits done, is we used the base elevation for the detention pond that's within 50 feet of it as kind of our, our excavation limits. Uh, I believe it's elevation 50. That's what's uh, the elevation bottom of our proposed pond. Um, we do understand, you know, having walked the site, that there's ledge outcroppings throughout. Um, and obviously, if test pits were performed uh, and indicated that we had bedrock issues, that detention pond, as noted in the comment, would have to be modified um, and approved by the board. Uh, All right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Sure, why don't you? If you need someone to do test bits, I can get you that. <laughs> Keep. Uh, it's fine in the it's fine in the con the diggers. It's not the engineers. Yep. Yep. <laughs> no, I got that too. Um, uh, sorry. Follow up question. Yes. Not, um, so, Phil. Uh, do we have any concerns over the effectiveness of the retention pond that's being proposed because of the ledge? So, yeah, if there was ledge um, in this area, then obviously we'd have to think about um, right. we, redesigning. We would need to maintain at least two feet separation from that ledge for purposes of infiltration. But um, if that was the case, we would likely explore an alternative type design. It would more become a detention basin versus an infiltration basin. I'm sorry, so maybe I'm not keeping up with the conversation. And so that's the purpose of these excavation, the, the excavation that you're doing. Right. So Correct. Sorry. Right. To, just to give a little background to my concern about it, I, I think I brought it up a couple months ago when we had the meeting that, you know, years ago there was a uh, an emergency drain down of the uh, the water tank there. I, I forget it was for some sort of a maintenance project. A um, couple days after it started, you know, my my driveways to the south down there, you know, off off those plans. And I have a drainage swale that runs along the side of my driveway to catch runoff from the hill and go out to the end of my driveway. I had water just pouring sheets out of the woods across my driveway, and I had a river 
you know, coming down my driveway. And I, I understand that the release of the, uh, the water tank is, you know, in quite an order of magnitude greater than, you know, probably even a 100-year mm -hmm. storm, but it was over a week, whereas, you know, a 100-year storm could be over a, you know, period of a day or something like that. So that's, you know, kind of what got me thinking about the whole issue. Keep, keep going, sir. You okay, have other yep. questions. Um, let's see. So, you know, with all those peer review comments that we, we kind of addressed, and there's more to go through, like you said, offline, will there be another peer review at the completion of uh, addressing all those comments? There, there will, yes, there will okay. be a, 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 a back and forth to close all the issues on the, on the peer review. Okay. Um, then you also mentioned the, the fire department requesting a, um, a perimeter access around mm -hmm. it for a, a small truck. Is that, are they asking for it outside the perimeter of the fence or within the per, between the fence and the, the solar array? The way I heard him say it was, yeah. was inside the fence. Inside, okay. I was just yeah. concerned it about just additional. It said around the ray and it didn't ask for gravel or anything, just said a cleared, cleared path. Okay. Which they, um, they have. Um, and then, you know, lastly, I guess the additional swale that was requested along the eastern side, which, you know, un unfortunately for, for me and my concerns, it directs more of the runoff rather than going just out of the site down the hill brings it right to that retention pond, infiltrating kind of downhill to my house. It just seems like it's bringing even more well, runoff southward. If I can respond to that. So um, we did create that swale to direct um, stormwater to this detention basin, but the, the overflow is still to the east. So the actual design point, if you will, re remains the same. So we, we, we actually explored this as kind of two catchment areas, two A, in, in the revised stormwater report, if you haven't had a chance to review it, but um, we analyzed uh, the entire, more of the area up into the um, water department property. Uh, we also analyzed more of this area here, and we, we although this is one design point, we used uh, two kind of catchment areas within that design point, two A and what we're calling two B. So 2A all flows to this proposed uh, detention pond, and in a 100-year storm event, that's when it would overflow and continue to run down. But right now, the, the way we've collected this stormwater, it's really only this area that's sheet flowing to the abutting property, properties, I should say. But, but again, just the, the edge of this detention pond to um, number 38 is about 375 feet, uh, and to the actual solar arrays, it's almost 400. Uh, you're not changing the topography of that area in which the solar f uh, panels are, are placed, correct? Correct. We're, we're maintaining the existing grade as close as possible. Majority of the grading is associated yeah. with the... Right. And there is some, some feathering that will need to be done right. um, on the eastern edge of the drive. But. Right. So the area you're calling 2B Presently, sheet flows down the hill, right? Uh, correct, yes. And that, that grading doesn't change at all. The reason why we had to subdivide this is because we're actually we're changing the surface type, which means the water will get there sooner, faster. Yeah. Um, so that's why we, we've kind of caught that before it gets to that area. Okay, all right, thanks. Please, yeah. please. Yeah, la last comment is um, just in regards to site distances and, and things like that, you know, I can personally tell you that from the second floor back back window of my house you know I can right now with all the leaves being down and everything I can see right all the way back to the the tree clearing on the other side you know clear as day and you know I I know we're talking that it's it's not gonna be that bad and everything I still would really like to see some sort of an effort made for some side some sort of screening trees or you know any anything you can do I, I think it would go a long way with you know a, a lot of the residents out on Union Street um, there, you say tree, there's nothing cleared t today. No, I, that's what I mean, is that I, you know, I can see before the clearing, you know, so I, it's only going to get worse. I can, I can see to the other side of the trees, you know, where it becomes clear because there's no, no leaves on any of the trees. There's not that many pine trees or, you know, evergreen, anything like that out there. I, um, I, I guess I'm just confused. I, you say where it becomes clear. There, there's nothing clear in this area right I'm, now. I'm saying that be, behind... behind Yes, out looking looking out that way towards the retention pond, you know, on the where you where the wastewater facility, even where the photovoltaic cell is, the view from my house. I'm saying I can see the clearing line on the other side of the trees, and there will be tree clearing 
back mm -hmm. there removing some so it's only going to get worse from where I look at and, it. And essentially what you're talking about is looking up that lo that lower yeah, of if, the if you three wanna, lines, yeah. correct? Yes. Yeah. He's, yeah, he's, his property's down here. Yeah. Yeah. B basically looking, looking back here, I think the, the tree line is, you know, somewhere in, in this area right now. And I can very clearly see where the tree line is from the back of my and house. And your house is that third one down? No, I'm, oh, he's I'm, off I'm down he's here. Off. Oh, he's yeah. off the, okay. Yes. All right. uh, are you concerned about seeing the equipment, or are you concerned about seeing an open space where trees are removed? Um, well, from the first floor of my house, probably just space where trees are removed. But from the second floor, definitely, you know, in, in being able to see equipment. Okay. It looked like with the, the elevations that you just showed before, there's such a difference in height from the houses, where the houses are located to where, and how high do they stand? Eight feet high? Six feet Six high? Six feet. The I, I don't Six see how you could so see that the equipment. The back, the back, well, so my, my house was I would draw a straight line from the picture I saw before to yeah. where the top of that equipment is. I don't think I would see it. What, uh, what is your address? There? 38. 38. Yeah. But isn't that, that no, bottom? No. No, no it's, no, it's th off. 30, uh, 36, 32, and then 30. So basically at the, at the bottom elevation of the driveway, my second floor window is probably... But this 30 is foot labeled 38. I, I sent an updated section. Yes, he, he uh, did. Uh, yeah. so, so this is incorrect. Yes. The number's incorrect. But the numbering is incorrect, but the section lines are accurate. And so if you wanted to do one for 38, that's an additional one you haven't done yet. Yeah, we don't have, again, um, it's not typical to do survey 500 feet from your I work here. I, so, um, I mean, I can try to run it from the extent of where we have survey for. Uh, but given that they were over 400 feet from any structure, we, we felt. Um, yeah. Well, <clears throat> to satisfy this gentleman, uh, I, I would ask you to indulge us and do one more cut, if you, one more cut, if you would, from his property up sure. looking there. All right. Uh, anyone else in the audience care to make a, a comment? Yes, ma'am. Hi, I'm Barbara Carr at 36 Union Street, mm -hmm. and um, you know, last time I was here and I voiced my concerns about my view changing and the fact that I, I moved, to, I bought here in Norfolk so that I have a nice backyard with lots of trees, um, and today I can see through the trees, I see the sunsets, um, I think that if, you know, still, and uh, you know, I know that you're talking about it not being a big deal, I disagree I think that I'll my view will change in some way and I think that stinks uh, I also think that the um, the fact that the it's being done for the for the folks up in the condos up at the top of the hill their views won't change except for I think one gentleman I'm not sure if he's even here tonight uh, but you know they they won't have any sort of impact on their views but I will in my backyard um, that's just my two cents um, I'm just repeating myself from last time I was here it doesn't sound like um, that's getting through. Um, so I guess my other question is, if this gets approved from the, by the planning board, does it then go to the Board of Appeals? Yes. So that would be our next place to voice our opinions and thoughts. And uh, just to be clear, your, your house is 36, which is that one down there, huh? Yep. Okay. Um, well, if this drawing is correct, it's pretty difficult to see how you're going to see any of that equipment, uh, any of those uh, solar arrays. The hill is going to block them. Uh, are you looking at this? Or? Yeah, well, I'm so not looking at this, that's this guy. Back to the cross section. Okay. <coughs> and just to be clear, since these are. <coughs> The one I'm looking at, and it may have been misnumbered. Yeah, this, this sheet is accurate. That's this sheet is accurate, and it would be the bottom one bottom. on the sheet. So it's a little house with the trees and the... Yeah, this right. does, yeah. I don't know. This doesn't show a whole lot to me. I, I, I guess what I would, would say, is, and what I just commented, is if you were to draw a line from approximately where your window might be <coughs> and try and see the top of that array, the hill is going to block it. So if you just put a straight line from windows in that house to where the array is, it appears to me, it looks like yeah, you too. will not see the array. The thing you might see is perhaps a thinning of trees 
through a few hundred feet of trees. I don't mind the thinning of trees. It's really seeing anything, any glares from the array, and anything at all from the array. I only want to see trees and sky yeah. through there. That's all I want to see. The, these are non-glare solar panels. Just they're designed to absorb the, yeah. the rays. Yeah. Um, and I just I, I will note you know there's per the per the bylaw there's a, a clearing limit uh, that we uh, again per the <coughs> per the regulations could clear to and we've actually um, maintained an additional 10 to 15 feet from that clear line where we're capable of so uh, the applicant has you know done their best to maintain that tree line um, right. but, given, um, given the that's true but uh, and we appreciate that but mm -hmm. the <clears throat> Nevertheless, because you're going to put the arrays in, you're, you are going to have to clear out a certain number of trees, certain sure. distance of trees. Roughly how many feet of trees are you going to take out? Like square foot wise? No, uh, depth of trees. You know, from the tree line, how far in are you going to have to go? Current tree line, how far in are you going to have to go? Uh, well, I mean, the, the entire site is vegetated. So there's not a tree line. I don't know if you can go to that plan. Go to the other drawing, would you? Yeah. yeah. So th the revised tree line is kind of the perimeter. Yeah, and the existing tree line is? Uh, here. Yeah, okay. So there's going to be yeah, mm -hmm. a lot of trees taken out, right? But okay. this, this line represents the 50-foot no clear. <coughs> yep. You can see we've tried to maintain an additional 15 to 20 feet past that. Um, to try to limit the impact. Sure. Could you add something like a sight line to those drawings? Because I, I think we're all sitting here looking at those section views and elevations, and we're trying to guess, would you see equipment? To me, in a, a few of them, it doesn't look like you're going to see the equipment from the second floor. But if you could just add a straight line, perhaps for the benefit of the people that live there. On the, the, on the profiles? Uh, the profiles, yes. It's just a straight line. Sure. Thank you. Okay, anyone else in the audience? Sir, grab a mic. Um, how are you? My name is Chris Moore. I live at 30 Earth Union Street. 1.8 feet per mile. Um, so I do apologize. I just walked into the meeting late. I was at work. Um, I was here the last time, and I just saw the... Um, so I guess my question that I have is I did see that you guys put some stakes out there. And again, if you did say this I apologize I just walked in what are those stakes so that's where the fence line is that represents the limits of the proposed fence line okay but it doesn't include the so you're gonna be cutting taking the trees 50 feet from that no no if you're standing on that fence line yeah that's the limit of clearing that's the limit of so clearing. to the left will be where the solar array is and everything to the right of that fence line will remain no trees taken down correct okay I mean I Look, it, it's not my land. I, I, I can't really say too much, but I would love to see it on the other side of the peak. I'd love, I'd love the fence line to be on the other side of the peak, um, especially since it doesn't benefit us at all. It benefits the condo. I, I think there's so much, to me, there's so much room over at the condo. I don't understand why you can't put them over there someplace. But um, that's all I'd like to say, just that I really would just rather see it another. Yeah, I mean, as we went through before, we were approached by the condo association to build in that particular area. Grab the mic, please. Sorry. We were, we were approached by the condo association to build in that particular area, and we would rather build somewhere where it's already cleared and where it's flat, but that's not the opportunity we were given. And we so really don't, unfortunately, don't have a lot of control about the placement itself, and I, I don't so believe... So just out of curiosity, here. was it... Um, do they want it there because it's, it's uh, better sun placement, or is it just out of the way for them? It's, it's just uh, un, underutilized land that they, that they had available to them. Okay. Okay. Anybody else? Anyone else in the audience, sir, to wish to uh, comment or make a question or... All right, hearing none, I um, propose we continue this until our next meeting. That's 7 10? No. 7 10. Uh, 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 probably 7.45. 7.45. 7.45. So moved. Do we have a second? Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 We'll see you, gentlemen, in January. What's the date again? I'm sorry? Uh, June 14th. January 14th.
And by then, presumably, you and Beta and the town will have gone back and forth and Yeah, there were result. only... Yeah. Were you able to get the test pits done? Two or three, yes. They were actually completed today. Oh, okay. I just don't have... Right. I didn't have time to revise stormwater and address your comments because I just received them today. So. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> All right. Let's see. Where the hell are we here? Speak to that. Uh, I'd like to get, I'd like to get Bob on, but do we, uh, we have to? What's the next item we have to address before I can get Bob on? <laughs> well, we have Lincoln Road at seven. Lincoln Road. Uh, uh, well, if you want to. Yeah. Want to do Lincoln Road? We need to do Lincoln Road next? I think so. Right, because they were scheduled for 7.30. Yeah, okay. All right. Which one is Bob here for? Uh, it's a sidewalk, sidewalk discussion. Oh, okay. We could... Uh, yeah, that's right. Say again? That's probably what it's... Well, how long do you think? We wouldn't have a long discussion on sidewalk, it's right? It's probably 15 yeah, minutes, something like that. I don't know. Real close. Yeah. yeah. All right. Might have we might have one or two next week. Uh, All right, let's do it. <coughs> All right, gentlemen, if you could, uh, <coughs> gentlemen, gentlemen, if you could have your conversation in the hall so we get on our next uh, item, please. Um, all right, we're going to jump ahead on our agenda a little bit. There's one item that uh, has been lingering for a while on our discussion agenda, and that's the uh, policy that we ought to follow in the insistence on developers producing sidewalks when they make. Uh, their new developments. Uh, Rich is going to talk to us a little bit about what we have in our rules and regs for requirements, and then we need to talk about uh, what position we want to take as a board in terms of sidewalks. Go ahead, Rich. Sure. Uh, relative, we have three categories of roads, residential street, secondary street, and primary street. So on a residential street, it requires a minimum of uh, one five-foot sidewalk on one side. Um, and then when you fall down or, or slide down to secondary and primary, it both uh, require uh, two five-foot sidewalks on both sides of the, uh, of the street. And we have not, um, essentially most of the subdivisions really fall into the category of residential or secondary street. Mm -hmm. So there's always been a minimum of one, in some cases two sidewalks required. So that's been the practice of the planning board uh, over the years. Um, and the last one, I think, if we recall, went back to 2010. It's a little bit dated, but that when a developer comes in and seeks to get a waiver from providing a sidewalk, that the planning board would have uh, monetary compensation from the development put into a sidewalk fund. And over those years, there's been sidewalk projects that have been done. Um, looking at the account presently being held, there's $167,000 in there. So while it seems like a lot of money, um, when you start to apply it out to sidewalks, it's not a significant amount of money. When's the last um, time we put money into, a uh, developer put money into that fund? Actually, the last one was, um, it was uh, Valley Street, the uh, the condominium. So th that wasn't a subdivision, but it was um, a development. And they about, put money into the fund? Correct. And what, what, what year was that, last year? What so I should correct years? it, so let me clarify. Yeah. 2010 was a subdivision. Um, Valley Street was uh, 15, 15, 14. We can look at the exact date, but. What year? I think it's, hold on a second. Okay. <laughs> Give the date. Which, which Valley Street? Because there's the townhomes and then there's the One of those. Ones, uh, red, the red color ones. The, co the condos? Uh, the, the other ones across the street. Yeah, the ones on the oh, okay. kind of the yeah. right hand side. Yeah. 2017. 17. Two years yeah. ago. Okay. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> all right. So we've had an inconsistent application of, of a, a policy, which is uh, we require two streets. Uh, a developer comes in, asks for a waiver for excuse me, two sidewalks. 
comes in and asks for a waiver for one sidewalk, and we have inconsistently over the past number of years uh, asked them to contribute to the sidewalk fund to uh, um, for the equivalent of that second sidewalk that mm -hmm. we don't require if we waive it. All right, so Mr. McGee, we'd like to hear from, from you about uh, your approach to this. Um, getting back to what Rich was talking about, if we're talking subdivisions, we're only talking about minor size streets. So the subdivisions proposed, our spec, uh, specifications are for a sidewalk to go in on both sides. Yep. So we eliminate one side, but um, I thought we've been pretty faithful about either spotting that sidewalk either on the street that it comes in off of or putting the money in the bank. And I don't know if there's an exception. I thought we've been pretty good about that. And I've followed the subdivisions, um, you know, the money trail. So I don't think you've been inconsistent. You take Valley Street, which isn't a subdivision. That was, uh, was that a Form A lot? It was the, uh, the condominiums, uh, right. Yeah, so we just, I think what we did on that was that um, we weren't sure that we wanted to have the sidewalks installed in front of those condominiums, and it would only be for that length. You couldn't hit them up for the entire yeah, street. Yeah, it would be yeah. unreasonable. Sure. So a sidewalk to know was no good. So what we did was when they developed the land, we had uh, preparation for a sidewalk, but then just threw a thin layer of grass over it so we'd have something to mow. But in the event that we had a sidewalk in the future, it would be easy clearing. It would be structurally sound underneath. Right. So um, I think we've done a great job of... Uh, of accounting for the for the sidewalk and the sidewalk fund is uh, the last time we use it I can tell you that we I think uh, we applied and the uh, planning board approved us to add some cobbles in the downtown area because we get money from chapter 90 we got money from um, the sidewalk fund and some budgetary monies just to make that an inexpensive uh, adventure uh, installation so um, I don't know what else I think I can it really tell you. the genesis was really the one on North Street. That was yes, the, it was. Yeah, you know, it yeah. was uh, the more recent one. It was three lots. It's on North Street, um, and so there really is no sidewalk on North Street. So it kind of hung out there, um, and it really essentially ended up being. And it really wasn't three lots. It was like, let me rephrase that. It was really two. So to have some kind of, I think the the notion is some kind of metering or benchmark where you know it's you know in that case they don't need us you know it's it's two house lots it's two homes it's a private road yep. and they don't need a sidewalk necessarily there but to have some consistency i think when there's these kind of outliers if you will that that was that was the the bigger driver more recently that we had that yeah well that triggered year. that triggered the desire to have yeah. this conversation yeah. yeah and that's probably six months ago um mm -hmm. <clears throat> and, and clearly that that two lot layout where they wanted to have three houses that could be an exception uh, and you can always deal with, it, uh, with exceptions but the the question is what should we do with the base lot policy suppose a developer came in he wants to put in nine houses um, on a cul-de-sac uh, the regs say two sidewalks we often waive the second one but we haven't I don't think, despite Bob's assertion to the contrary, I don't think we've necessarily asked them at that time to contribute to the sidewalk fund for that second one. Take, you well, if take, it's a Norwood, take it's Norway all Farms, for example. Did we, did, we, yes. did we ask them to contribute to the... So right. they're actually building sidewalk on Norway Farms. So uh, that, no, one side, though, right? Yeah. No, no we're bringing the sidewalk out onto Midway Street. Yeah, right. And they're responsible. So having a sidewalk go down one side, and then the other side is being carved out on on uh, Medway Street yeah so add it all up it's this amount of sidewalk that would normally have gone in a subdivision but your example of a three house uh, yep. installation on the cul-de-sac yep. um, that's only a that's not a subdivision no that's that's a subdivision already existing yeah so comments from the board None. So we are saying that the uh, the plan will provide uh, if there's one sidewalk on one side of the street on the other side of the street they provide funding and, and we that's, will move forward that's been our, consistently. Yeah, we should be consistent. 
Well, I think oh, Bob's uh, right about Norway Farms. Uh, I do recall what he's saying that, that the equivalent of the second sidewalk was uh, contributed in, in the sidewalk along Medway right. Street. Yeah. Yeah. But I think we'll see that tonight with uh, Ariana Estates yeah. when we get to that. Because okay. they have sidewalks going on uh, Myrtle Street out yeah. front. Uh, okay, right. So I can't think of an example where we didn't do good in this. I don't know. We didn't do either compensating sidewalk or, yeah. or funds. It's been either or, and it's probably good that it's discussed here and stuff like that because yeah. one set rule um, would might bring it into some bad construction. No, I, I, I can understand that. Right. So it's, it's but there has to be some compensation, yeah. either for cash or equivalent so sidewalk along a, an adjacent street. Or it's been good to us. The fund's been great. Yeah. So, um, yeah. Do you have a sidewalk plan that said, I've got 167000 here's how I'm going to spend that? Negative. So you just take target of opportunity? Um, I do. <laughs> Barry he does. does. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, we just went through the whole Smart Streets thing, too, right? Yeah, we did, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So it's a connected existing sidewalk. All right. Uh, Chad, anything else? No. Nope. Aaron? Gary? All right, thanks. Uh, before you go, Bob, I'd just like to acknowledge for those present and those at home, <clears throat> um, Bob is uh, retiring from many years of service for the town, and, and I'd like personally to say thank you very much for your service, Bob. Thank and you. And we're sorry to see you go, and I wish you the best in retirement. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Okay, so back on agenda. What's next, sir? We can... Lincoln Road. 15 Lincoln Road, site plan review for uh, ground mounted solar array. You again. Again. <laughs> Hi, my name is Still Daniel, um, Still Director of Land Development with Next Grid, I hope. Um, we're here to receive site plan review uh, before appearing at the Board of Zoning Appeals for a special permit uh, to construct a one megawatt. AC ground mount solar facility on uh, just less than six acres of land uh, at a parcel at 15 Lincoln Road in Norfolk, uh, very close to the Walpole border. Um, we're proposing a ground mount fixed tilt solar system, no moving parts. Uh, the system will consist of a central inverter uh, placed pretty far from the residential uh, abutters as well as a battery storage system. Um, the, system the site has pretty much three major um, abutting areas. One is, is a river, um, the other is a transmission easement, and uh, lastly there, there's a group of residential homes on Daisy Lane. Um, the subject parcel has been used over the last 30 years as somewhat of a junkyard, uh, mostly consisting of auto-related junk. Um, there's other types of garbage present on the site, but mostly related to cars. Um, Currently, there are some back taxes on the land, and more concerning, uh, there's an open case with mass DEP mm -hmm. uh, for cleanup of chemicals related to uh, car parts that were disposed of, mostly batteries, on the site over the years. Yep. Um, the original filing with the DEP, I believe, was in 2006, possibly 2008. Uh, economic hardship was filed by the current owner, and so uh, it's just remained. Um, is the there years. a remediation plan in place? There is a remediation plan, I believe, in 2012, and then it just seems like it kind of disappeared from from the records. Um, and once the economic hardship was filed, uh, so we are working um, with the BSC group to, uh, to remake that plan. Um, it's going to require a lot of testing and, and a lot of money and work uh, to remediate Jeez. that. That plan um, doesn't exist, huh? The, the old plan doesn't exist. <coughs> uh, well, we, can we, can we, I'll touch on that in, in a second. Sure. Uh, so, um, you know, given the proximity of the river, we believe cleaning up this is, should be a paramount concern environmentally um, for the community. Uh, we think this is a very wonderful benefit that, that we'd be cleaning this up. Um, and uh, given the hardships of this parcel, um, and and the economic burdens that, that it houses. We believe that this is truly a highest and best use for this piece of land, um, and we don't believe it would be cleaned up otherwise. Um, we don't see a profitable enough project feasible in this location. Um, so we think this is a real win-win. Um, at this point, I'm going to introduce uh, 
Brian Egation. He's an engineer with BSC Group, and he's going to go over um, the peer review and some of the stormwater and, uh, and other issues on the site. Peter, could you Peter, could <coughs> you slide that chair oh, yeah. out of the way so we could see the? Thank you. <coughs> Good evening. Uh, for the record, my name is Brian Urgation. I'm a professional engineer with BSC Group, and I'm here representing um, NextGrid, and uh, and we are currently seeking site plan approval for a proposed large-scale ground-mounted photovoltaic uh, array on at the property of 15 Lincoln Road. Uh, as Daniel mentioned, the property really has three primary um, abutters. <coughs> On the eastern side, we have residential properties. To the north and the west, we have the Stop River. And in between the Stop River and our site, there is remaining land um, also owned by the current owner of the Locust property, uh, which is not part of this, uh, of this proposal or of this project. And to the south, we have an overhead electrical transmission line, um, or easement, I should say. It's about 300 feet wide. Um, so it, it is a, an ideal place for this type of a, mm -hmm. of a development. The project uh, consists of just under 3,000 solar panels are proposed. We have a access road that would start at the terminus of there's an existing gravel access road which is used by the utility companies um, and so that comes off of Lincoln Road and we would start at the terminus of that with a approximately 275 foot long paved access road. What, are, what arrangements must you make with the utility company to do that? The owner already has an existing easement to his property, and that's how he accesses it, so we'd continue to use his easement. Um, also part of, the, of this proposal, there would be two equipment pads, one um, down here and the second one at the terminus of the access road. They will house um, all the various electrical equipment, inverters, uh, battery storage systems. Uh, there is also a perimeter fence which is proposed around the property and um, as Daniel mentioned we had we've submitted this uh, we've submitted actually to both planning board the conservation commission um, because there are resource areas uh, adjacent to the property which affects affect the development the permitting of this property um, and we've also filed with the zoning board of appeals for the special permit um, the property itself is in the B4 zoning district, and it's surrounded by um, R30. R I'm sorry, the R3, R3 zoning yeah. district all around it. Present, yeah. Present. Interestingly yeah. enough, um, the property itself is not located in the solar overlay um, district, which we, <laughs> which we came to learn. Um, so you know, we submitted everything, and we got peer review comments back. Um, we started taking a look at those. I came in, met with staff, and uh, as well as with Beta Group uh, to, re to review the comments and um, and discuss, you know, the ways forward and, and solutions. And we really don't have any issues with any of the of the comments. There are some relief that we are seeking, and so I'd like to just kind of point that out right now. Um, from the planning board, we would be seeking one waiver. And uh, if you were paying attention at the last uh, at the last one, it would be to to conduct the hydraulic conductivity testing. We have done um, soil test pits on the property, and the request was uh, from the peer review that we do additional soil test pits. And so we you know we will do that, and we would request that um, the board can condition that prior to construction. We'd be happy to get out there and do some additional test pits. The, the reason we were opposed to doing the hydraulic conductivity testing is because this is a, a formerly an auto salvage yard and if you look back on Google Earth through the history of time you'll see a lot of vehicles and old truck beds and so forth which were kind of covered over and um, digging during the test pits was very difficult. It took several attempts to find you know, holes where we could get down some to some virgin material. So, um, what's the topography like on that on that uh, site? 
Sure. So it's very, um, it's very hilly and it's irregular, and, and that's really because there's, uh, there's several. Let's see if you could go, maybe back to sh uh, the second slide, it's the existing conditions plan. So most of the site here is pretty evenly sloping. However, you do have areas right here where there's pretty steep topo topography. Same thing over here. There's a large uh, tire pile that exists right here as well as some fill piles. And so that, you know, there was obviously a lot of things that were, that were covered over. We, we also discovered when we did the, uh, the existing conditions survey, we found an old drain manhole right here, which was a little peculiar, as well as a drain pipe and an outfall right here, discharging, you know, at one point in time, untreated stormwater um, yeah. directly to the resource area. So that's one of the things that we would propose to remove as part of this project. Um, Betsy, can you go back to the other drawing for a moment? Just just uh, one question it comes to mind. So I guess, I'm, I'm sorry, just to uh, quickly ahead, to answer your question, it, it's very irregular, but yep. you can tell from that it's generally it slopes from the south and the east to the north and the west, approximately 5 to 10 percent slope. And what we're proposing for finished grade would be an even 8 percent slope. And this, you've got a uh, area <clears throat> on the uh, east side there between you and the residences that you're not building on, right? Correct. So this is uh, our perimeter fence over here, and yeah. we would be maintaining that 100-foot setback to the to the residential properties. Uh, some east. some of which, based on the earlier drawing we saw, is wooded. Correct. That's correct. There's a uh, the existing tree line meanders. Um, yeah. There you go. Like that. Okay. And so at least some of that would remain un, un, uh, uncut, right? Yeah. Everything, everything outside the fence, presumably. Yeah, so luckily that most of the trees on this property are to the north, and north trees don't cast shadows to the south. So we, we really don't have to do a lot of cutting on this site besides um, yeah. what you see. Yeah. Um, so I, I mentioned earlier that, interestingly enough, the property is not in the solar uh, energy yeah. The yep. district yep. and what that means is the solar in the if your property is in the solar energy overlay district you have a hundred foot setback to the residential properties otherwise it's uh, 50 feet we're keeping we're maintaining the hundred feet anyways on this on this side of the site for for obvious reasons that's where the residential abutters are mm -hmm. however we I mentioned earlier we were going to be requesting some relief and that is because um, we are getting about 30, almost 30 feet here on the southerly, but it's residentially zoned property, but it's not by use. It's not residential. It's an overhead transmission line. Mm -hmm. um, and on this property, you have a landlocked piece of property under the control of the owner of the locus, and that has no frontage, no access. It's completely landlocked. And beyond that, you have the Stop River. So while it may be technically residentially zoned, it's not residential use. Uh, when you say landlocked, there's no access to any, uh, any street or way? Um, that's, that's correct. It's a very, and if you, if you look at the, uh, at the assessor's maps, it's a very irregular shaped, yeah. almost elliptical, and it continues south of the, of the site as well. Yeah. We, we believe it to be completely unusable. Um, topography wise and it's adjacent to the river it's within all the setbacks so. yeah the, um, just to continue with that you know so there is obviously there is a um, FEMA 100 year flood zone which at this portion uh, is elevation 123 that line is completely off the property it's not on our locus uh, in addition to that we have the uh, bordering vegetative wetlands which are completely off the property but we do have the 200-foot riverfront, which extends onto our property, as well as the 100-foot buffer zone. Um, hence, we are, you know, seeking an order of conditions. Mm. Okay. Yep. Th that's essentially the project in a nutshell. Um, I could, if you thought it would be helpful, I could kind of gloss over. I don't want to really get into all the detail with the with the comments and the and the revisions. We we are uh, well underway with making those revisions, but we have not formally submitted that. We we hope to do that very shortly. <clears throat> um, but I do have a draft plan, which I'd be prepared to show you, which um, if you were interested. Phil, you have any comments that, that, that you want to make? 
So we did meet, and I think we we uh, came upon a resolution on the majority. I think the issue was the 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 use the use the uh, adjacent land use issues, um, but I don't think there was. Anything. So the the most, um, and Betsy, if you wouldn't mind skipping ahead to uh, slide four, please. Grading a drainage plan. So what we had initially proposed um, was a large infiltration basin at the northern extent of the property, and you can tell from the grading that it was it was designed to capture all the runoff from the site. However, to do this, um, we had to we have an existing pretty s very steep slope back here and to make this work we had to propose it a, a cut slope at a two to one um, two feet horizontal one foot vertical mm. which is a little steep mm. and in addition to that we were not providing a 15 foot wide access all the way around mm -hmm. the basin mm -hmm. which really to do that would render this project economically not not feasible um, so we looked at various options, and what we've settled on is uh, we are going to go subsurface um, with, with chambers. Um, that, that will enable us that we w we're not going to have to um, deal with this big slope. And actually, Betsy, I'm sorry, if you could jump slide eight or nine. And that will give you also the 15-foot path around? It won't, it won't be necessary because the it won't be a, a surface drainage basin it will be below ground well a 15 yeah. foot around the uh, around the solar array if you if you was is for the fire department right yes different different, different comment different 15 yes. foot yeah all right 15 foot okay um <clears throat> one more betsy please thank you yeah so what we are proposing now um is we have some riprap swales along the perimeter of the developed area as well as down here on the south but we also have um, one that runs through the middle of the site runoff is still going to flow to the to the chambers as it does it's going to get to this back swale and we have a number of it, they're a little difficult to see here but I think there's five different um, catch basins which will capture the runoff and uh, discharge it into the into the system we the system will also have um, it will will still have an emergency overflow, um, but however, it's going this system is designed to completely attenuate and and recharge the hundred year storm. So there will be no anticipated uh, overflows in a hundred year storm, which which was a concern that was brought forward by Beta. So that's um, you know we have finalized all the calculations and and everything, but um, this is this is what we're thinking now. Um, we did just today receive comments uh, from the fire department, and one of them, as you as you pointed out, was 15 foot perimeter access. And I think, in many instances, we have that. We don't completely have that yet, so that will be something that that we'll certainly take a look <coughs> at, and that will be addressed in our in our follow up submittal. Okay. And just to comment on what the fire department is asking for, our row spacing accommodates a pickup truck, so. A pickup truck can drive between all these rows, and, and our maintenance cleaning trucks do do, do that. Um, so, f as far as putting out a brush fire with a pickup-sized vehicle, I, I don't think, as it stands, there's going to be a huge issue, anyways. Um, but we will get we'll get yeah, that figured. Right. Well, one of the issues I, I remember picking up in in uh, Phil's comment on the previous array, which would apply here as well, was uh, <coughs> the uh, question of a plan for removal of all of these panels at the end of their life. Uh, is that part of your thinking? Well, there, you guys require a decommissioning plan and bond for mm -hmm. all your solar projects, and we will, of course, be <coughs> complying with that, yeah. Okay, all right, yep. Questions from the board? So what was the, we we're going to talk about the remediation? Okay. Yeah. Um, so you were asking if there's a current remediation plan in mm -hmm. place. Um, you, do you know the definitive answer? So what happened, uh, and, and we have an LSP who's on board. He's, he's just really getting into it now, mm -hmm. taking a look at it. But he, he did do a lot of research. 
and it was pretty interesting. But I guess what happened is at some point, the uh, the prior LSP, the professional who was doing that plan, um, we suspect he wasn't getting paid maybe, but he walked away from the project and, and that's it. Nothing ever happened. Poof, it vanished. Um, so we're looking at that now. And as Daniel uh, mentioned, it, it's going to take a good deal of, uh, of testing. And so did we're he, just to determine how much the levels plan? are. To, to the best of your knowledge, did he complete a plan? I don't have the answer to that. Do, do you know who he is? Yeah, we ha we have his name. I don't I don't know it off the top of my head. Well, I mean, it might be financially worth your while to contact him because and, and pay for his plan if he had one. Yeah, I don't believe he's uh, around. I'm not. I will have to double check on that. But, Mr. Chairman, the uh, I did reach out to the DEP earlier, and there there is a financial inability file on this property that um, will kind of coincide with further assessment and remediation that needs to be done um, for that. And I know there else, your LSP will have to. Uh, I know Daniel had mentioned you were in contact with DEP to start that process, because um, they're well. The property owner is on, you know, has filed that financial inability. So essentially, financial ability is mm. we don't have the resources to yeah. clean it up, and yeah. so this is the vehicle to to get the project cleaned up. Um, so we'll need to have. Just get a little bit more sense of where you're at with that once you get further along a little bit with them to get a better sense because there was litigation filed against there is a judgment against this property from the town to get the property clean well, essentially yeah. there is okay. so just to give a little background on how solar works in Massachusetts and in the smart program um, the smart program is what is the state mechanism to pay us to develop solar um, to file for the SMART program, we need to get our permits, um, and we can't really commit the money to DEP cleanup until we get our SMART allocation. Um, so we can't really commit to getting the DEP details to you before uh, this closes. Um, obviously, we will be obliged by the state to clean this up once we close on this property and before we build, and I don't think there's any risk we develop this without handling that problem. It's far too much risk and I, I believe illegal so um, I, I don't want to make that a condition of our, of our approval is to get deeper into the DEP side of this but no I wasn't suggesting oh, okay. that no that needs to be bundled as part of the approval process right. that's all yeah. and then there's a matter of the back taxes on the property how are those being settled is that also kind of part of the those be immediate, immediately upon closing on the land they'll be paid okay. The one thing we did have a discussion, not to, you know, I'll put Daniel on the spot, but there are two other parcels that the owner, that they are not purchasing, but are in the rears relative to taxes. So it would be nice um, if uh, all the taxes could be uh, paid. but Or perhaps you could work something arrangement with the owner to buy them all, put them under your ownership somehow, and <coughs> just clean up in perpetuity. Just throwing it out there to food for thought. Always worth that question to ask. Right? Yeah, we don't ask, right? Uh, anyone else on the board questions? Uh, anyone in the audience ca care to comment or question? Yes. Was this uh, Donna Jones, North Street, was this a business existing before the zoning went into effect? The is the rest of the neighbor did the when zoning got placed was this changed to residential? I don't know the answer to that question. Um, do, do you have a time frame in mind that you're referring to? I'm just thinking of one property that had a special permit to be a business in a residential zone. That was this property here is what you're referring to. I'm referring to Rockwood Road. 45 Rockwood Road. It was a Boomer Realty. Yeah. Right. And then the zoning went in place, and so it became a residential. If if your business stopped for three years, it defaulted back to residential. I see. I, I, all right. That's I understand what you're saying. Okay. <coughs> um, yes, I don't know. Special permit. This is not a special permit. So it's. 
So the underlying zoning is residential. It's R3, which I think you mentioned earlier. Uh, no, the underlying zoning is, is B4. I'm sorry, B4. Uh, surrounding, Never. all the surrounding the properties. Surrounding are residential, R3. right. So it, I don't know the history when the junk column we started there. But it's still zoned B, uh, yeah, business, B4. So business, yeah, B4. Yeah, B4. Okay. All right. right. Yep. B4. Thank you. Anyone else in the audience uh, care to comment or ask a question? All right. Well, if not, then uh, thank you, gentlemen, and uh, we will continue our discussion in our next meeting, if that's uh, acceptable to you, January 14th. It is. We need a uh, motion to continue. So moved. At uh, what, what time? 8 p.m. All right. We have a motion, and, <clears throat> and it's been seconded. All those in favor of continuing the site plan review? Out there by itself. Say aye. 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 All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. See you next month. All right. Betsy and Rich, where are we? What's, it? Where, what's next on that you want to uh, tackle here? Uh, can we do it? It should take. Yeah, the public hearing for the fees. DR. Well, we've got, uh, don't we have Mill River, Ariana? One point in time, the owner got it approved. Yeah. So uh, they can keep their business there. Yeah, well, you're right. Timing wise. Oh, I'm sorry. Right. You're right. Yes. Yeah, we do. Okay. All right, so Ariana. Mill River yeah. and uh, Ariana Lane. Mill River Estates, Ariana Lane. Uh, who's here to speak to that? Changing the to have Ah, yes. Anthony Aye. DiMartino, I own Aria on the lane. Actually, let me, want to do a little background before we start? Yep, started. please. Okay. Please, Rich, go ahead. So at the last uh, planning board meeting, I brought forward the discussion that um, Mill River Estates is one of the subdivisions that had Bob had spoken about changing over from granite curbing to the monolithic, monolithic Cape Cod berm. Yep. yep. Um, so the board wanted to uh, make the residents aware of the subdivision who, who reside in there that it's a monolithic berm along the edge of the roadway, not a, a granite um, mm -hmm. curb. Mm -hmm. And that was one piece of it yep. from the last meeting. Yep. Um, the other piece was the uh, modification of the plantings behind for Ariana Lane. Yep. And then um, and then while Mr. D. Martino's here is just give an update um, to the board as far as getting the project um, completed. Um, I do have a cost to complete estimate from Mr. McGee that we can pass around. Yep. Take a look at this guys. And one of the uh, Oh, there's actually more copies. Okay. Yeah. Well, one discussion we'll get to the end is we'd like to. Uh, I'm doing some research, some discovery here. Um, I don't have a. I can't give you specific. I didn't do a uh, forensic analysis, but there's no security on this subdivision. Um, the lots were released by the planning board back several years ago, but um, we don't have any surety. So part of the discussion towards the tent. The tail end of it we discussed was getting assurance from an assurity company to have security in place for the completion of the roadway. So those are kind of the. Yeah, okay. Do you, do you have a copy of what I missed? A, you do. Okay. Okay. Good. Okay. Very good. Okay. Well, anyway, go ahead, sir. No, I, uh, I'm, look, you guys brought me here. Um, <laughs> I got a couple questions. I see that he put a, a thing together for the surety, a couple of things that are done. Um, minor, minor things. Um, other than that, I mean, the asphalt mono berm, that's what we spoke about. That's how we paved the road. Um, we did that in 2013. So uh, that's what we're heading to do. There's a couple things I'm actually, you know, in the process. I have, I own the granite curbing. It's sitting on the property. I just, I was going to go do it, but we got a snowstorm. Um, it's sitting there. Up, uh, up at the front, you mean? Up at the front, yeah, at the right, radius, yeah. And then that would be it for the granite curbing right. um, at that point. Um, you can see 
there's, you know, obviously I do, do final paving, do these structures, do stuff like that there, so I'm yep. okay with all that. Yep. Um, these bounds had to all be put in and as built before I could start the project, so that could come out. Um, the as built are almost 99% done. Um, we had as built everything as we went uh, because that's Bob requested that. So that's basically once we do the final paving, do all the final castings, you'll get the final project. Um, other than that, I never, I actually fumbled, I never opened up the thing to see Janet's um, trees or new. <laughs> So I didn't look at that because it's already too late for me anyways. So I can't even do that until next year. Um, so, but I will take a look at it. Did you want to? Uh, yeah, uh, uh, Rich and I and, and Janet walked the property with you regarding this issue of, of uh, changing the plannings. Yes. Um, she has made a recommendation to the board. I don't know if we all have copies of this or not. I brought mine from the last discussion here. Pardon me? Okay. Um, so when we get to that issue, we, we've got that to talk about. All right. Um, so the, the first, first. Uh, Want to talk about the curbing? Or yeah. First uh, issue is to get a. a motion to uh, make a minor modification to allow monolithic berm instead of uh, granite slope granite curving right yeah but did you want to hear I there's probably people from the neighborhood here so fair enough just uh, anyone in the audience pardon me uh, well monolithic um, Berm is pretty much a standard practice in town, and uh, we have support from the, from the DPW to uh, to use that type of uh, of curbing. Um, but anyway, please uh, grab a mic and identify yourself, and and let's uh, hear what. My what name's Dan say. Smith. I live at Six Ariana Lane. Yep. And um, it was my understanding when I bought the home that there was going to be granite curbing throughout the whole. Division? Slope grant curve. Right. Yep. Right. Um, you mentioned that it's a common practice to use the berm. Yes. I lived in Canterbury Lane, which is all granite sloped curbing mm -hmm. for seven years. Mm -hmm. um, I don't, uh, so I don't know if I agree with that's common practice. Um, and then also, I, why, why are we making this modification from the original plans? We're making a, a modification because the developer has proposed it, the DPW has reviewed it and, and accepted it. Uh, we have our uh, acting DPW, our assistant DPW director here with right, us. Right, right, but, but just because they wanted it, that th we were under the understanding when we bought the homes that we were going to have granite curbing. Now, can I jump in there? Okay, because right, I'm they, the owner. <laughs> right, but that, that's what it okay, was communicated. Look, you're the second owner in the subdivision. Uh, 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 number one. Sir, sir, please. Okay. Let's not go back and no, forth. No. Direct right. your so, comments to me. I'm just telling you what I, what so I was here's, communicating. Here's just what me. happened when I was building the road. This has been an on. I, I've done plenty of subdivisions in this town. And all the slope granite curbing has been a headache to you guys for maintenance purposes. Mm -hmm. So prior to mine, I did toils and road. We took out the curbing. We did the mono berm. Um, prior to that, prior app, we did the same thing. There's a, a bunch of them. Now we're at the point where in mine, and Bob had come to me, which was the director at the time, still is, but, and said, I don't want this. It, basically, the town is telling us now, we don't want it. The maintenance is too hard. It pops out. It's not a good product. And they can't force you to go with a vertical granite curb because it's three times the money. Um, so it all got changed for a purpose, for a good purpose in this town. Um, they don't have the maintenance for it. It's, it's hard to do. And then, again, it was done, directed. I was directed to do it. Yeah. All right. Let, uh, let me. Uh, can, I, can I say one thing? You, you, yes, you can. But before you do that, I'd like to have the uh, DP, assistant DBW director comment uh, on that issue, and then you can keep, continue, sir. Yeah, to Tony's point, he's 100% right. Uh, the granite curb is a maintenance nightmare for us. It increases uh, basically our maintenance costs. It also wrecks havoc on our snow plows. Uh, so we use the modified Cape, uh, Cape Cod asphalt berm. It holds up well during the winter and is less maintenance for us in the long run. 
And what the term monolithic means is that it's it's poured at the same time that the pavement is put down. So it's one continuous. Yes, there's, there's a special shoe that goes on the edge of the paver. So the top course of asphalt is actually all in one as the berm. Uh, so traditional Cape Cod berm gets set on top of the roadway. It'll peel back and fall off. This is right. all one cont cont continuous piece of asphalt across right. the roadway. Yeah, understood. All right. Back so, to you, so sir. it looks like you're putting the interest of the DPW in the interest of the homeowners. Is that correct? We're putting the interest of the town on the table here for discussion. Because when I lived at the corner of Surrey Lane in Canterbury, which was a law, it's all corner. Yeah, I know the t I know the road, sir. I was there for seven years. Plenty of snowstorms. I never had one issue with any of the, uh, the granite curbing at all, and I never even saw anything in there. So. Yeah, I just disagree based off of seven years of living on a corner lot that had granite curbing. And it also, from an aesthetic standpoint and a property value standpoint, you know, those are nine, nine, $900,000 dollar homes and we're, gonna, we're not going to put granite curbing in? I mean, does that make sense for the town? It makes sense for the town in terms of uh, controlling our maintenance budget, yes, very much, and our equipment budget. But what about the agreement when we originally <coughs> bought these homes that we were under the understanding that we were going to have this this curbing put in and because it's taken so long and now the plans have changed and we have to live with that is that what I'm hearing so the go ahead rich um, go ahead. Yeah. the communication of the um, the change from the slope granite curbing to the monolithic berm to you I'm not sure but it's, it's this history of this goes, it goes back to 2013. So I don't know how, I can't speak to that communication out. What, what has been, the reason why he's here tonight is that in 2013, this was the pathway to go with the curbing. So they paved the road accordingly. And so we're getting to the point where, you know, the road is gonna be for acceptance it's once he's finished and it's going to be under the maintenance of the town so essentially is trying to have this formally blessed to make sure that everything caught up so we didn't get caught in the end now perhaps we're caught a little bit here where we're at where you weren't aware of it but I'm blessing some action that took place six years ago or I'm not me per se but bring it to the board to bless it so we can Corrected. This this subdivision was one. Um, the um, Oak Knolls. There's several ones that were around that time frame where they switched it out from the slope granite curbing. So instead of changing the regs, they got they they switched how they did the curbing um, from a uh, a maintenance point of view. I mean, there are there are homes that are with the monolithic berm that are. If you have you seen it in some of the newer subdivisions mm -hmm. where it's done? I mean, the so, so my so Frank Borowski, I'm eight Ariana Lane. Mm -hmm. um, my question is, why did you bring this up to a vote to the homeowners if the decision has already been made by the town on maintenance costs? What? Why are we here? Why did you send out letters to the homeowners? To bring it to our attention sure. for the first so time. The the board at the last meeting wanted to make the homeowners aware of it. To get okay, so that. you're hearing from two of the Correct. six homeowners who have right. taken the time, two hours of our day to come here and have our voices heard. Yes, yes. Um, yeah, it's our custom to make sure that the so, information gets out so that we don't... Yeah. yeah. So my, my other question is, I, I hear the town uh, on maintenance costs, but right. why is the developer also pushing for this? The developer isn't pushing for it. He'd put in whatever we asked him to put in. <clears throat> he's, he's just complying to what the DPW director has asked him to do. When did the change order come in? 2012. 2012? So why, if we this if you this it is what happened. Thirteen. This is where I knew this was going to happen. So my 
recollection to all of this is to put this at ease, I said do not involve the homeowners because if I went there in 2013, we wouldn't be having this conversation if I just put the berm in. I held off on the berm. I could have put the first phase of the berm. I held off because it's a better job to do it in the top, to do the whole right. thing. Top I could have done it that day when I paved the road in November of 2013. None of us would know any better, nor would you know, would you know any worse. So that's how so they want. They basically just want you guys to realize that when we're done, there's going to be mono berm. But that's if you, it. there's no, there's no ifs, ands, or buts. There, this is done. Uh, it's, it was done in 2000. So why wasn't it disclosed when we bought the place? If you already knew before we bought into I knew, the development, I told everybody we're getting berm. You'll have berm in front of your house. I have to go back and fix the. Like I said, I wasn't involved in yours, right. so, but yes, everybody was told we're getting a six-inch berm, you know, like a mono berm in front of their house. That's, if if not, what would you think would be there? I don't I don't understand. I just, you have to fulfill me because it's not shown anywhere to any of you, anybody there what I'm doing or what is going to be done. So again, if it's a done deal, then what are we doing here? That's that was the board. That was not me. You're, you're here, sir, at your, your own volition, based on information that we provided to you to let you know that, that this change was made and is being implemented so that we don't uh, find ourselves being accused of doing something without informing the local residents. Why does the letter say requested approval? Why does it just tell us that it's, it's been approved? Go ahead, grab the mic. I'm sorry. Like, like you, you make it sound like in this letter, requested approval like it was up for debate when it really it, wasn't. And now we're sitting here, we had to wait an hour to, to be, have our voices heard and they're not even being heard. Or it, it's, it, it's fallen on deaf ears. The, uh, it requires that the board make a minor modification to the plan, which was not done back in 2013. We didn't close the loop right. Right, administratively. We need to do that <clears throat> with a motion here at the table to make a minor modification to the plan <clears throat> to change from slope granite to monolithic berm and then to take a vote to authorize the developer to put it in. Um, and that's what we're doing. We're trying to close the gap administratively here to make sure that all the I's are dotted and the T's are crossed. I don't have those numbers in, in my head, sir. So I, how I, can you say uh, that it's cheaper for the town overall? Because I rely on be, because I rely on the DPW to have those numbers and figures and have thought it out. So can you provide those? The town inherits the finished product. Yeah. Well, it's about $150 a linear foot for the granite curb. Um, the model berm is included in the top course of the asphalt. Uh, for us to fix and remove and repair the granite curb, we have to bring in an outside contractor to do that. Um, exact cost numbers, I couldn't tell you. Uh, one of the things we need to really think about, because if we go with the slope granite curb, chances are this roadway will not meet minimum acceptance for the town, and the road will not be accepted because it doesn't have the mono berm on it. Uh, so we need to think about that as well. So, so let me ask you this. I, I, had, I had bought a home in, in 2012, 2013, which kind of aligns with the timing here, this berm, and there was granite curbing there. What, what, what changed from Ariana Lane to? I think what changed is that was one of those uh, times when that uh, Canterbury Lane was developed probably prior to, to the experience in town with the maintenance issue elevating the cost and before the DPW said wait a minute we, we want to change from slope to to monolithic so that that development probably is predates that decision to shift from sloped to uh, that's my guess well, I, I believe that that's why and again I've never had any issue Because right now it just seems like in um, just a story rather than hard numbers. But the, the town doesn't benefit up front by any savings between the two options. The town inherits the finished road. 
and we only have to deal with the maintenance after inheriting the road and that's some period of time after it's been completed so are, are you asking you're saying there's a cost benefit to the town We don't have those. So, so that tells me that we don't know if it's actually more expensive. I think what the DPW is saying that um, you have there's more tendency to have to replace and repair uh, the granite versus the monolithic berm and the equipment that tears up the granite, like snow plowing. No, we don't. No, we don't. No, we don't. We rely on these these folks. They're not out there <clears throat> putting forward stories just to make their lives better. They're putting out stories to uh, minimize costs for the town. But again, they should have those numbers to back it up. I, that's my job is to budget and to financially plan. So I understand. I've run many a budget myself. I, I understand your point. I'm just saying that like, for me to make that decision, that's why I want the numbers to back up. I'm sure there was an analysis at some point, but that well, can predates, we say predates me on the board. Yeah. Um, I do know that, you know, for the town to accept the road, that the monolithic berm is, is the new standard. So there's to, no more acceptance of, of sloped granite in the whole town? That's my understanding. That, Keeney Pond, for example, is, so is a transition a neighborhood. All houses and we're going to have berms? Well, well, I'm sorry, what's the question? I'm not saying Ariana is, but... So we can put in a development with two, three million dollar houses and we're going to have berms and not granite in those yes. developments? Yep. Yes. Keeney Pond is a yes. prime example. They have sloped granite on one phase of it and second phase is a, is a berm. And that makes sense for the town? Just, just from a, I mean, I understand there might be a snow plow that gets a couple scratches on it, but I mean, are we, if, are we looking at the property values throughout the town? Is that something that we're considering here? I think. <clears throat> One of the other maintenance issues we have with the granite curve <coughs> is the granite, the mono berm doesn't allow grass to grow in it. So if you drive through subdivisions with a granite curb, you're going to see grass growing through the edges of the granite curb. Right. We get called on numerous occasions to come out and take care of the grass that's growing in between the granite curb. I have millions of other things that I would like to be doing instead of weed whacking grass that's growing out of granite curbs. Uh, so that's part of the ongoing maintenance that we face with that. So it's not just snow plows. It's not just us having to repair and replace them. There's an additional daily maintenance that we have to look at that takes up staff time. All right. I uh, <clears throat> thank you all for your comments. Um, we're, we're going to proceed with a, a vote to uh, make a minor modification to the plans to accept uh, monolithic berm on the road. Do we have a motion to that effect? So moved. Do we have a second? Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Now we need a second motion to allow the developer to put in monolithic berm. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Thank you. We uh, glad you participated. Now do we need to also talk about the planting? Yeah, there's, there's, there's the next issue, yep. right, which is the, uh, the planning. <clears throat> All right. Now uh, we... We reviewed the plannings on this drawing in the plan <clears throat> uh, with the conservation representative, conservation agent. We walked that area, and she has proposed uh, some changes, which I think you've seen, haven't you? I didn't. I didn't even look at it. I. I okay. okay. What well, you I got? Put it up, and I was busy, and I. Fair enough. But you've got it. Yes, yeah. I okay. have. That's the assignment. And she, uh, she has made. Uh, do you have a drawing? The second drawing that she's oh, got. Second. Oh. Yeah. So you can see the red circles is, are the areas and, and the type of uh, plants that she's putting in there. Okay. The only thing I was, one of these, this is another subdivision that she was comparing it to? Yeah. The, um, so well, you yeah. Have to be careful what we're looking <laughs> So we'll she go, was using uh, Toils M Farm, which is uh, Fox Run, because that had the same. Same, basically the same thing. But like I said, the way she's got the plantings, um, I don't know if this is mine. Yeah, it is. That's yours. That's your area, yeah. Okay. 
All right, here's, here's what the letter Since you don't have a copy of it in front of you, I'll read it. It's very short. It's, uh, it's from Janet DeLonger, <clears throat> um, our conservation agent. Uh, said, I've met with Rich McCarthy, Walter Byron, Anthony DiMartino at Ariana Lane to discuss possible modifications to the planning plan shown on accepted plans. The plan shows 23 trees, that's this plan here, <clears throat> within the area designated as floodplain mitigation area on CONCOM plans. That area is approximately 250 feet in length. The western area of this subdivision towards Mill River is designated Conservation Protection Area by NHESP for Eastern Box Turtle. The plan from NHESP for habitat enhancement, <coughs> enhancement from Toils End Farm had two planting areas approximately 400 feet in length and required six fruit trees, an apple tree, a, Macin a Macintosh apple tree, a pyrus, malus, and a Macintosh. Five to six shrubs, raspberry, rubius, adeus, black raspberry, rubius, occidentalis. Additional suggestions for native shrubs, <coughs> common elderberry, highbush blueberry, and northern arrowwood. And then she goes on to describe um, in a drawing how many, which is that other one we saw with the red circles, and gives you the type of uh, plants and all their characteristics. So, so we, that's she was trying to do a comparison between. Right. <coughs> well, that's what yeah. I'm saying. That yeah. other one was Toil's End. That's that was Toil's End. That's right. Yeah. Yep. So yeah. You know, this is yours here. Uh, Correct. Right. So I, I have yet to go through and see what she put in for planting. Okay. I, like I said, we all walked it. I'm in agreement. I'll do. Like I said, she right. didn't want us to right. go back and take the place apart. So. Right. So, um, do you have the letter and, uh, that, that attaches to this? Yeah. Let's put that up there. I don't know whether the other board members have seen this letter or not. Mm -hmm. yeah, I think, so. no, I think we saw this at our last meeting. Uh, we you did. did. Okay. okay. Yeah. All right. <laughs> so we need to um, make a motion to. I believe make a minor modification of the plan to allow this change to occur. Yes. So I need a motion to make a minor modification to accept the planting change as recommended by Janet DeLonger, our conservation agent for this area. So I moved. Second. We have a second. 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 All in favor say aye. 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 All right. Now we need a motion to allow the gentleman to actually put the plants in. Do we have that motion? So I moved. Do we have a second? Second. All in favor say aye. 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 All right, that's that issue. Good. Now we need some uh, security. Security. All right, now the, Mr. <laughs> McGee, per, Mr. McGee uh, made a list, and the, the gentleman up there has said some of these items have already been completed. Yes, I mean, so I mean, we, I can deal with Rich on this, or yeah. we can go right through it and nip them in the bud right now. I don't. Know. Well, uh, we. So what I'd like to go ahead, Rich. Um, at least get a vote to establish a performance bond. That uh, I know you said you would reach out to a insurance company to to get this bonded, and then we can then come back. With some revisions to it, if you need be. But I think the fastest thing potentially is actually if we can go with this and then we can modify it afterwards. Or, however, I, I, I really want to need to get this in place. So. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, like I said, I mean, the, well, so the bonds, I mean, it, it, it's a $6,300 option he's got there. Um, they had to be in and as built it before I started the project. So they're mm -hmm. all in. Um, had to be done by the planning board. Do you want to, in the in an effort to be efficient about this, do you want to, uh, we could go back, we can at least maybe vote to have surety established with insurance company for this, get the paperwork going, and then we can match up. We can the, make the numbers work. And yeah, but that would, I would like to do that. All right. And then we can. We can go back through because we ju I or just. Or I could just keep going. What's that? <laughs> well, I'm going either way. However, you guys want to do it. Well, I really, I I'm really. Uh, I'm at the, I'm at the end side of, of it, so. I like to close this exposed liability. Yeah. Fair enough. Fair enough. Uh, why, yeah. not, why don't you phrase a motion, which one of us will. Uh, uh -huh. Will. Uh, Wait a minute. <laughs> so move. So, <laughs> just for clarification, you said on the on this spreadsheet on the bounds. Those are already they're, they're already taken care of. Well, I think the, the only comment we would have is they have to be visible 
visible. Right. They're all, uh, they're all, they're all too great. They all had to be, yeah, <laughs> they were there. We worked Bob pretty quickly today as he's uh, phasing out into retirement, so maybe then we can we can get back yeah, to this. But I, yeah, I'd like to right, establish the the bond. The, that's the language we need you to uh, yeah. to recommend one of us. Chad's ready to. No, I would like to have the board make a motion to establish a, a surety bond through an insurance company. That's what we we discussed. Um, for the remaining items to be completed in Mill River Heights subdivision, Ariana Way, subject to just clarification of the punch list from the Department of Public Works dated December 10th, 2019. All right, so. Uh, and then I'd like to have it, uh, sorry, one last little phrase. Yeah. Can we do this within how many, how quickly can we get this done, do you think? Take a month to do. Month? All right. To be. As soon as we get the, obviously, a, a agreements right. on. All right. So we'd like to have this in place by the next plan board meeting, January right. 14, 2020. Yep. Okay. Um, so someone needs to make a motion to that effect. So moved. moved. Second. Second. There, you need Third, I guess. Right. Uh, so all in favor say aye. 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 All right. So you, and we will see that tied up with a ribbon at the end of next meeting, I hope. Are there any other? Do you do the, if it doesn't snow, put the grant in, and we can look at the list more, right? Absolutely. Any uh, <laughs> other items we need to address? No, here? I think that's it for Mill River. That's it. Okay. Thank yeah. you, sir. Thank you. Yeah. Merry Christmas. Uh, it, does he need a time for next meeting? <coughs> yeah, we're when, that's, next meeting is on January fourteenth. January fourteenth. We'll see we'll you. We'll do the business item. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we'll get all the paperwork in place. Okay. So. Okay. <sighs> no, no, no. no. <laughs> Nothing wrong yet. Um, so we have two items for people in the audience. We have West Westfield Drive the next. Oh, actually, I actually haven't given it to you yet. We have an 8 p.m. So public hearing. 8 p.m. on. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. I apologize. Yes, the change in the fee regulations. Right. Okay, yeah. Read the notice. Should I read the notice? Yeah, hang on just a second. Um, so the public yeah. hearing notice is to revise the fee schedule? Yep. Um, Gary's going to read the public notice into the record. Notice is hereby given in accordance with Mass General Law Chapter 41, Section 81Q, as most recently amended that a public hearing will be held by the Norfolk Planning Board on Tuesday, December 10th, 2019 at 8 p.m. in Meeting Room 124 at the Norfolk Town Hall, 1 Liberty Lane. The Norfolk Planning Board will discuss proposed revisions to its rules and regulations for subdivision of land and site plan approval, including revisions to the fee schedule for application review and inspection fees. The proposed amendment to the regulation is available for review on the town website at www.norfolk.mass.us or in the Planning Board Office of the Municipal Building during regular business hours. Thank you, Gary. Okay, Rich, it's your nickel. Okay, uh, thank you for uh, indulging me. As we discussed at the previous meeting, we've, uh, I've asked the planning board and you're entertaining the notion of revising the fee schedule. That way when um, projects come in requiring public hearing, the advertisement costs will be in addition to the filing fee, yep. for which we would then, the money would be filed with the applicant, it would go into a revolving account, and we would then pay out the Sun Chronicle directly. Yep. And uh, certainly would, uh, as I, I think I mentioned in the last meeting, the Conservation Commission already does this. So the, I know the ZBA, I think it asked this question because mm -hmm. I talked to them at the last meeting. Yep. With Amy Brady, who works for the Conservation Commission, she sends a note, you know, the advertisement to the Sun Chronicle, they come back with a tear sheet how much it is. The applicant pays the fee, and then we take care of all the transactions. So there's no uh, work on the applicant yep. as far as that goes. So we mimic that same process. All right. Um, so we need a motion to uh, 
Well, do I guess to amend Appendix A. Is there any discussion? Ask the audience. If well, we will. But uh, any discussion from the board members first? No. No. Okay. Okay. Anyone in the audience care to comment or question on this topic? If not, then we need a motion to amend Appendix A. Yes. Uh, the supplemental requirements uh, per the <coughs> draft that's uh, in our hands and available on the screen. So moved. Second. All in favor of amending Appendix A to incorporate uh, uh, advertising fee at the expense of applicants say aye. 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 It is a vote. Thank you. Now we're going to take a two minute comfort break for the purpose of relieving the chairman. She was giving me the thumb. <laughs> <laughs> all right. I think I might have handed out all my Here copies for Westfield Drive, but. So, well, you want to come up here and sit? No, no. I got to come back nice and early. Oh, okay. Um, a couple things. One, if you remember, we had um, we had we're working towards getting Westfield Drive accepted as a public way. Yep. And uh, through the process, which, which we'll give an update, there uh, the title that was done for Priscilla Avenue, which is Westfield Drive on this particular end, um, the title came back with there's two property owners that abut the old Priscilla Way that have an interest in the roadway. Um, the, the interest is divvied up between Uh, Norfolk Development, uh, the town of Norfolk actually has an interest in it, and then there's two private parties. Uh, one of the private parties, um, they have a lot which, 
fronts on River Road, but then wraps around over to, which is now Westfield Drive. Um, and through the process, I reached out to them and discussed with them, um, relinquished their interest in the roadway, so we could get Westfield Drive accepted as a public way. Mm -hmm. It was approved by the planning board mm -hmm. to be accepted as a public way. And from that discussion, they wanted to ensure they weren't reluctant to do that for the November meeting because they had sought a permit <laughs> through the Board of Appeals to tear down the old house there and put up a new one. So they did file for a building permit today. They wanted to have their permits in place before they would do that. So what I want to do is then go back to them now um, and say, okay, we, we did talk about that. Um, and see if they'd be willing to relinquish their interest in the road. Get, did they get, did they get the building permit from Bob? Uh, during the process. It's going through the we, we were alerted that it's come in. We have to sign, you know, check the box that it's mm -hmm. okay. Um, if, for example, they are not willing, to, and this is to relinquish their interest without any compensation, so there's no compensation in yeah. this, in this yeah. situation. Yeah. The, the secondary option um, to them make this a public way would the town would have to go through a taking process. So what we're hoping is that we get voluntary relinquishment of their interest and there's another private party that has interest as well. Um, there's only two of them. Um, and because I already got stopped at one, I really didn't go to the next one because I didn't feel be, I already knew what yeah. two. One of the two. So I just want to, I know we had discussed over the phone to let the board be aware of that. Um, the road is ready to be accepted, mm -hmm. and it was ready then. It's really more the administrative side of it. Yep. So we still need to follow that through, and I'll be, I have to stay on top of that and keep uh, Mr. Nation informed yep. of what's going on. So what they did decide, so what they wanted to do was get a reduction in their bond, and that's what you had before you. Yep. Normally, they'd be coming in here, the road would have been accepted, it's all done, um, and all the work is done. Uh, the one issue that was not on the plan was the, which I know you probably just saw, you saw it before, but um, the concern, potential concern at the end, there's the, uh, the drainage at the end of the, the roadway. Mm -hmm. and it drops off and there isn't anything to alert um, somebody driving on there that it, it drops off. Um, so I know there was a suggestion of a, a wood guardrail or a visual barrier. I mean, I think it's more for awareness. So I don't know, putting some plantings there might do it. I mean, I don't you know. I don't know. What's the slope? I mean, is it, is it it's pretty, pretty, it's pretty is gradual? So it doesn't necessarily warrant a guardrail. It's okay. more the guardrail would more be visual. Yeah, visual. It, 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 to me, it didn't seem like it was steep enough to warrant a guardrail. But you know, that's. Um, I don't think we don't have pictures of that. Or do we have pictures of that? We, we have pictures. I don't know if we'll get the angle that would. Be I know it's really hard with the picture. It's tough yeah. slope. Um, it's. I guess the good question would be if you put, so if you Google Westfield Drive, actually, I don't even know if Google has Westfield Drive. You know, by any chance? Actually, let me see. While you're looking, let me do this. Well, you can Google an adjacent street and then move over, right? Well, I wanted to see if it, you know, sometimes Google makes it appear that. Uh, 71. Westfield? 73? 73 would have been the property originally. If you don't mind, I could read um, Bob's verbatim here from October 8th regarding the matter. True. Yep. I put it in perspective. This is regarding Westfield Drive being on the agenda for uh, recommended for acceptance October 8th. Uh, Westfield Drive is complete as designed and approved. At the end of Westfield Drive, the road pavement ends with a significant drop-off into a drainage retention area. We would recommend a guardrail be installed or some other kind of visual barrier 
that would restrain in or reflect back for day and nighttime driving. So I, I focus on the visual barrier term there. Um, that same day when I got this email, I did, I did reply back to Rich with what I would recommend. And f from, from my purpose, I would install three six by six posts, pressure treated, one at each corner, left and right, and uh, one in the middle. All three of them could have a reflective material facing the road, perhaps 12, 18 inches long. And uh, my point for that would be that it would be, again, that visual barrier. And I I'm a snowplow guy, so I think of snowplow people, and I wouldn't want the horizontal connection between those posts. Uh, somebody can clearly connect them with a horizontal bar, but me personally, uh, in a snowplow truck, I'd prefer not to have things that you know, typically get damaged or prevent me from pushing snow over the end. Could you show us where you would propose to put those? This is the end of pavement here. Yeah. So it's a 20-foot wide road. You'd do one on each corner and one in the middle. And, and uh, the slope down, if, you, if they weren't there and someone drove down over the edge, how far down do they go? Well, these contours are two-foot contours. It's, it's, it's probably a three-to-one slope, so you can walk it, but you're walking on um, yeah. riprap, so yeah, it's yeah, not yeah, pleasant. Yeah, yeah, sure. But um, someone, if someone drove over the edge, they would get stuck, per se. Yeah. Um, so I think it's that, again, I do harness that... Uh, Visual right. barrier. So, so you propose three po three posts with reflective uh, tape or whatever on it. Uh, did, I, you'd want to use that a by Bob McGee. Yep. And what was his response? He's oh, the, did I? No, I did not. Oh. I only had emailed it back to Rich, and Rich may have missed that because uh, it was in a did chain. Did you run it by Bob McGee? <laughs> I apparently haven't. Okay. Like <laughs> so All I right. need to. Uh, I I can run it by Bob. Yeah, I, I, and then. It sounds like a re very reasonable. Sounds reasonable, and uh, I imagine that Bob would approve it, but it, yeah. we are bouncing off him just to make sure he's okay yeah. with it. Um, so we, we can do that, and we still have to. Mr. Nish is not completely gone with us yet because we've got to get the rules accepted. So, yep, yeah, I understand. Um, yep. But so it looks like he did it a little. We have the as built? Yep. We do. Uh, yeah. to, to, to repeat, back in October 8th, yeah. I was, uh, Westfield Drive was on the agenda for student yeah. acceptance. Yeah, I know. The, the issue the only, was the administrative one. The yeah. only issue is, is a deed issue. There is no work issue. No. Um, there is no completion issue. It's, this road's 100% done per the you know, approved plans. Yeah. And we have the, the as-built drawings? You certainly do. Yeah. Okay. You have everything that would have triggered it to be put on the agenda for student the acceptance. the top course is on. Correct. Yep. And then we just recommend it for approval, and it's yeah. accepted by the DPW, right? Well, it's accepted by the selectmen. Uh, the selectmen. It would have, yeah, the streets if it wasn't for the, the deed to the road for both of those properties, it would uh, be accepted. It would be done. Yeah. It, it actually goes, it goes in front of yeah. town meeting. Yeah. Remember, you it remember? would be accepted. Yeah, yeah. To, be, yeah, yeah. to be accepted. It, it was the only. Okay. As we started the street. The I's are dotted and the T's are crossed. Yeah, the yeah, only the it, only undotted I, I guess, is the one we just discussed, which is the three posts. Well, yeah, but to point out that's not part of what was on the approved plan. That would just be us doing that to, to um, right. good faith, I guess, right? I mean, yeah, yes. some, someone's asking yeah. and we can comply. Yeah. I would. It's certainly been a frustrating experience. We would like to be done with the road and released from obligation. As would we. Um, as would we. We'd like to very much get the the uh, clearance from the two owners who have ownership halfway out into the street and get that behind us. That stands in the way of you and us accepting the road. Other than that, so and we would uh, kindly accept your offer of putting in three posts with reflective tape as long as Bob's okay, and I'm pretty sure he will be, but we still need to bounce that off him. Yeah, and, and the 
fall short of calling it tape, I would use a, a metal material, you know, something robust that right. gets mechanically fastened. Fine. Just terminology. Yep. Um, Agreed. Okay. Agreed. I, I, so as a huge accomplishment from my perspective, it would be to have the bond reduced to zero, given there is no work. Rich, you okay with that? <laughs> That's right. I don't vote. <laughs> no, but I want... <laughs> If you have a, you have an input. Yeah, no, I understand. Um, well, I'm going to take them on that they've operated in good faith so far to to get this done. They've been very diligent. That will. Get well, I mean, if you look at the list, I mean, there's yeah, there isn't anything. Nothing on the list. That, no. that, uh, and uh, the only thing we would hold is if anything, and we can, you know, we'll see when the spring comes. Be a little clean up. Don't we usually get a letter from the DPW for bond reduction? Yeah, he just. What's the date of this one, by the he way? He just did it today, but he didn't. Uh, <coughs> there's no money. There's no. Uh, Estimate was prepared by others, not by him, it says. Mm. So yeah. can, can we make a motion to accept Contingent. with contingencies? The contingencies include the Approval. installation of the recommended bollards by DPW and acceptance of the bond reduction by DPW. Uh, well, those, yes, it can, but those bollards are not, they weren't even part of the original scope of the project. Right, but he's agreed he's going to put yeah. it in, and they were requested, so why not? I think two separate motions. I think you could vote to release the, except for $1,000 in case I need some administrative money. Well, I, I would prefer the bond to be zero, and I would I pledge that I will personally put on those bonds as soon as humanly possible, uh, um, bollards, assuming they're approved um, but I would like the bond to be zero that's what I'm this is going to use the bond money to put on the ballers I'm okay with taking the bond to zero because the road's not accepted I mean he's still I mean we st still need to get the road accepted we do yes. and that's that's clerical that's not construction no and I look at the list I mean the top course is 10 grand yeah, that's everything's done. done everything's, everything's done. done so I have no problem all right I don't either. We do, but we don't have the formality of having DPW approval for the bond reduction. That's true. We don't. It's, that is true. And I think he. I, think I mean, he's that's. I think that's. I'm going to interpret Bob's letter that he was implying. I, I don't know. It, well, it all says complete and NA. It says complete. It says complete. Page two right. of the letter right. just says. Page one says that West Valley has completed yeah. the approved drawing. It said everything's complete, and then. Uh, then the other items are not applicable. So right. <coughs> right. All right. So the chair will entertain a motion to take the bond to zero. If someone wishes to make that motion. So moved. Do we have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 There you go. Thank you very much. Uh, All right. Rich, I will re forward that email uh, so that you have the terminology. Second one that we would like to have Bob mm -hmm. okay. approve to accept the, or recommend or the his comments to the yes. contrary. Uh, yes. Well, we don't have to because we already did that uh, way back um, before town meeting because we put this on the list and uh, recommended uh, street yeah. acceptance and got hung up administratively. But we've already, as a board, said we recommended will, it. yeah, recommended it. Right. I don't think we need to recommend a street acceptance again because we already did that. Uh, yeah, we'll have, you'll have to do it again. Why do we Why? have to do it again? The, the time will, uh, What's the downside of doing it again? Oh, uh, the time will expire. We'll have other streets, too, first. Yeah, we'll have other streets. Oh, you mean... Oh, I mean, it'll just be a formality, but it, it's... All right, fine. I'm well, sorry. we don't have to do that tonight. No, 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 you don't have to do it tonight. Correct. Okay. Right. Yes. Why don't we have to do it tonight? Why not do it tonight? <laughs> You're not prepared. You're not, you're not in a position to be able to accept the road because of the of the administrative right. issues. So, right. but right. from a construction point of view, there's nothing standing in our way to do that, right? Correct. Okay. <laughs> For heaven's sakes, let's get this administrative stuff squared away. All right. Thank you very thank much. You.
Thank you, guys. All right. Thank you, sir. Uh, all right. Next up. Where are we now? 282? Yes, we are. <coughs> right. And we're looking for a minor revision to what the plans call for. Um, we did a site plan review or whatever and had. Uh, oh, this is the bollard around the, the sunken. The, exactly, okay. the bollard. So we have, uh, in my recollection, was that we had a second meeting that uh, Mr. Buckley had attended to, and there were some modifications to that. But one of those modifications, the original had multiple bollards down either side and we requested that can we rather paint the edges to bring attention to the slope and it was my recollection that that was okayed but I don't have the paperwork for that so I'm, I'm just going off with here who, who, who was with you that, that's, that made that recommendation who, who from the town no um, Buckley Bridge, Bay Colony he was representing us Bay Colony uh, okay okay <coughs> But in any event, it calls for a single bollard to be placed about 10 feet from the building on the edges of either side of this. Yeah, that's and what the plan calls for. That, yeah. That's what he has still on his plans. Still on his plans, okay. Right. And so he's, what he's instructed me is that's what's on the plans. If you don't want the bollard, go ask to have it removed from there. But it creates, uh, to me, it would create a, a problem be just sitting, having a post sitting in the edge there, one for plowing, uh, people back into it or whatever they're going to damage their car which creates a liability um, you what's know what's the loading dock used for uh, what what it's a warehouse building shipping so you get so tractor you, trailer trucks that come in and back up right. to the dock yep. yes yep. Um, so presumably the point of the bollard is to stop cars from going down the slope right yeah. I'm not exactly sure what the I was told it was to make people aware that there was a slope there uh, because yeah, I don't, was, I don't see a purpose to make a car going down the edge because you'd be driving into the, into the building. There's parking spaces. That's like there was the scent in that s potential situation was if there was no you know, no trucks at the loading dock and somebody was driving through the parking lot, it, you know, it drops down the pavement area. Right. If, if this so. is the building and that's the the depressed area, a car driving this way would go bloop bloop. Right. That's that's it would if they were that close to the building. If they were that cl right. close, right, which the isn't a likely possibility because there's a set of stairs there. There's a on the up opposite side is a um, it's another dock and um, the electrical transformer which has bollards around it. So it's not it's not a means of travel in any way, shape, or form. You drive into the building, you back out of your spot, and you go towards the entrance. So, so just for a little bit of background, the loading dock was approved. So, uh, years no. ago, uh, probably five, so, uh, six, uh, six or seven years ago. 2013. Yeah. Right, 2013. And then they came in in June. They had a new uh, tenant within the, the end of the building. Uh, and the planning board approved the site plan back in June. Um, one of the things, so the, the loading dock has been there for a while. Correct. Um, paint was suggested to to mm -hmm. paint the pavement so it actually visually shows the depression oh, um, and then the thought was the ball would be added in there to for further awareness so the question is does the ball help for awareness or does it create more of a hazard or alternatively could you put some reflective well the, the the reflective the paint is a great idea as long as you don't have snow cover on it once you once mm -hmm. the snow is you can't see it right uh, 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 that True for anything. Yeah, <laughs> so we did. If you want to put my little reflector up, I mean, uh, so no. Is that it? That's it. Yeah, there we what go. is it? Yeah, I like that. Yeah. Yeah. Line of reflectors. So, not to line the whole entire thing with, with reflectors necessarily, but you know that's an alternative that you, know, you tack into the, you know, the, you know. So there's a question. Potential exposure, I guess, if you need to add the bollards in there. Yeah, I, f I feel the plow guy is going to have a lot more trouble. He's got a back blade to pull things out, and as he's trying to back blade and swing and pull snow, he, all he's going to do is hook into that thing, and if he has to stay away from it, then he's just going to create <coughs> a giant pile of snow that I The, the only thing I can think of, of, and I don't know whether it's applicable or not, but you, you see these... Uh, um, 
posts that are that are gimbled. You know, if somebody comes along, that's that's more what I was thinking of a the plastic thing that'll fold or something. Yeah, that, you know, it's that, there, so it's visible, gets, but if you hit it, it bends over. Yeah, it you bends. Can, it doesn't hurt anything. Uh, you know, I don't care about doing that. I just don't want to have a solid metal post yeah. in there that if yeah, somebody's backing into, I'm going to be paying I mean, liability if, costs if and look there, that's one of those tubular tacks flat into top the to linear. Yeah, whatever it, it tacks in. So if it yeah, that's, rips that's, or breaks, okay. uh, but that's what I was thinking as you know, but potential alternative. I could is the go plow, along. Is the plow going to be able to bend that over? I mean, I was talking to your DPW person here just to ask his opinion, and he said anything that's in the middle of the property that's a plowed area is going to be hazardous. But why would a plow be plowing the slope of the loading dock? It's not the slope, but the location of the bollard is sitting Where on the there? edge. So when he's when he's got a back he's got a back blade to get it around, right? So he's got to scrape that top area here, and then he's got to go down to the bottom to scrape. <coughs> but you know, you got a plow; he's going to have to come in on an angle to sweep his plow and and kind of scoop it off off the edge to bring it around a little bit. And that's only at this this end of the building where it's you know 14 inches high ish 14 16 inches high so I have those little reflectors in my driveway for the plow and they they've never been knocked over no they just go right over them. this is the building uh, here you guys have the bollards here right i'm sorry but uh, you got to grab a mic not for us but for people at home mm -hmm. well that yeah i mean that's showing right there these are kind of in the middle of well, look, I could go. Yeah, I could are. go along with the the floppy post that that that. Uh, but I like something visible there. To in the eventuality that somebody comes along and just alerts them to the fact that what? Wait a minute, there's something there. I shouldn't go go down. At least for the first half of it. Pardon me. At least for the first half of it. Yeah. Maybe you don't have to do the full length of the, the run. No, maybe just one or two of those things, one on each side, maybe. So yeah, I'm I'm fine with that, but you know, to me, a bollard is something sunk into the ground and yep. and concreted and. Yeah, but that was the original in, thought. I agree with you, but. Okay. Uh, and this spec that you put up there is for one of those floppy posts. It is no. Oh, right. Right. well, I mean, it could be similar. similar. I mean, I. Yeah, I understand, I don't but have that was the concept. It was a, but that was the concept, right? It was the concept. Okay. Walter, you're going to have to make the motion for a floppy post. <laughs> <laughs> or. All right. Do we have a second floppy post? Uh, <laughs> second for the floppy post uh, motion. Second. No, you can't Plastic. second your own motion. Oh, I. <laughs> second. All right. I didn't know I made a motion. Uh, all those in favor of floppy posts instead of bollards, <laughs> say aye. 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 All right, here we go. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. Where are we now? Let's see. Um, Three bonds. Endorsement of, uh, we can do that on the way out, endorsement. Uh, endorse Trailwind Circle and Silver Oxide. So we got to release the tree bonds. Tree, where, where are we? Tree, oh, really Hampton Roads, I'm sorry. Hampton Road. Release tree bond from 17, release tree bonds to zero, is that it? We've got 17 yes. bucks in both of these places? Yeah. All right, the chair will entertain a motion to release the tree bonds for Hampton Road and Berkshire Street. What I mean is the, the amount of seventeen. Why are we doing it? Yeah, why, why have they been the, planted? These, or? as I understand it, these these are done, finished, and and uh, the, the bond money is kicking okay. around, and we need to. Yeah. So this is an administrative. This is to clean up. Clean up. Our, clean up our books here. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Okay. They are the money that has been sitting there for about the last 12 years. Mm -hmm. Well, it turned into $1,700. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. uh, do we have a motion to release the tree bonds for these two? Second. Okay. All in favor say aye. 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 All right. Now we can, uh, <coughs> two endorsements, we'll sign them on the way out. Meeting minutes. Um, we had a couple of uh, meeting minutes that uh, Betsy completed and. Uh, you got inputs from at least me. I don't know who else may have. I given. sent just a couple of typos. But yeah. Mm -hmm. I think it's fine. I think so. So okay. we need a, a motion to accept the minutes of November 12th. I move to approve the minutes from October 28th 
and November 12th. Now, wait a minute, before we get to October 20th, fair enough, uh, do we have a second? Second. Right. Uh, before we vote, uh, what did you do on the 28th? I'm still nudgy about items two through seven. No, I haven't. I, I, that's, why I, that's why I paused here before we, all right, let's see what, what we did here. We don't have that, do we? Is yeah, we do, we do have It's the last item in our stack. Oh, you actually put the whole thing in there. I see. Mm. Okay, I suppose that's a, that's well, yeah. What my objection to her original draft was that you, you couldn't tell what the article was when oh, she right. just said uh, to uh, see if we'll amend this section by deleting this and inserting that. But you didn't even know whether it was for yep. parking or building height or whatever it was. So. Okay. She's, she's this, overcome that this issue it. by putting it all in there. So I'm happy with it the way it is. Thank you. So now we have a vote to accept the two sets of minutes. All those in favor say aye. 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 Done. Um, town planner updates. Town planner, update us. Sure. Uh, just a point of clarification on sidewalk discussion. So, uh, yes, as I <coughs> my memory banks there. So the one that I referred to on Valley Street, that actually was a site plan approval. It wasn't. A s so just to okay. All right. Yep. Just a point of clarification. Okay. But uh, um, so we did have uh, the B1 committee met last night and. Uh, a discussion about um, you know the, the comments through all the way through and up and through town meeting with the zoning changes but they're going to have a meeting on uh, January 6th and on January 6th is to go back through the bylaw proposed changes reevaluate to see what may need to be modified may not need to be modified I don't know if you had an opportunity to go through MAPC's report, but there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of good information that I think some of the questions that came up last night, the answers to those questions were in that report. Um, what we're going to one of the things that is on the list to do, and I sent a request off to the uh, advisory boards to meet with them in the beginning of February. Um, to have a presentation about the whole kind of weaving everything together a little bit that was something that in retrospect probably should have occurred with them that didn't happen um, and then they did have some specific questions that were brought up last night that I need to do a little bit of homework talking to Josh I did have a discussion with Josh about um, with mass housing to see if we can get some additional funding for Josh to continue because his work has really concluded with the issue and so the, there's some clean up things we need to do with the report but effectively his work is concluded um, and he was using uh, on the initial grant huh? on the initial grant on the initial grant correct um, there was a community uh, the um, Salem mass had got a mass housing grant and had gone through a similar process to make some zoning changes and some of those lessons learned from there uh, the fellow from mass housing thought there might be some portability to us mm -hmm. in relation to what we're trying to do so Josh is going to put a scope of work together and then review a mass housing so I'm hopefully we'll have a, an answer I can forward to the board the B1 between now and the January 6th to have them engaged because I think it was assuming <laughs> assuming that happens um, one of the things that, that I, I would like to see I hope you guys on the committee would like to see too is make a revision to this and make it available based on the work that you do between now and next next uh, town meeting so that it's available yeah, so prior to the town meeting as me opposed to after the town yeah, meeting. Yeah, certainly pick up in. on what Rich yeah. is, is talking about with a few added details. So we, we, talk, we set up a whole schedule to, well, first of all, we established that it's important 
to get to the springtown meeting and not wait to a year for the fall town meeting to bring these Agreed. changes back Agreed. to the meeting we set up a schedule to get to that meeting trying to make trying to address what we'll call for the sake of this conversation some of the shortcomings with our first approach yeah. so and we backed into it a little bit from when the springtown meeting is so the springtown meeting is the second tuesday of may the warrants close two weeks before that the advisory board starts meeting five weeks before that so basically seven weeks before town meeting we have to ha we have to be done with the warrant and have presented it to the advisory board which was like the middle of march which is the first weekend in april, first weekend in april. yep right okay. so back back from that we planned a community a, um working backwards there's a committee meeting which follows a public meeting uh another committee meeting which follows an advisory board a joint advisory board planning board meeting um, which follows a committee meeting we're having in January so the goal is to what I'll call informally present to the advisory board and the joint and the planning board in a joint meeting have some discussion have a committee meeting to follow up make some recommendations have a public meeting mm -hmm. right and then get then have another committee meeting get to the advisory board with the warrant so the goal would be to have Josh come back to present the MAPC report for that advisory board planning board meeting mm -hmm. right one of the things we talked about last night is is that report is done for all intents and purposes the recommendations that will the committee will be making going forward will be made by the committee right so Josh won't be at, he won't be editing his report that report is now a is it's now a historical document so we're working on setting up an executive summary some discussion points and eventually we'll be writing the warrant articles uh, for recommendation to the planning board etc that that's the long so of the not, short version of what we're talking about him to come back with, with another version of this correct no but the recommendations will be consistent with that maybe uh, maybe not maybe. Yeah, maybe. I mean, his, so the recommendations that the MAPC made in that report are not consistent with the recommendations <laughs> the planning board okay. forwarded to the town for review. They actually changed. They made their own set of recommendations based on their experience through our process. Okay. Um, by the way, if you haven't read the report, you should. It's an excellent report. They did a great job putting it together, yeah. gathering all of the information from the variety of sources that we put yeah. together and presenting it in a in a right. relatively clear fashion yeah. so um, it's got a lot of data in it I think making that report public so I, I, I left this out the board um, we requested the board make their final comments on it by Friday and send the comments to rich the board the committee sorry so that we can make one last round of sort of what I'll call editorial comments to the report and then then publish it and publish it correct was there also a presentation that I, I thought I heard that in previous meetings that was being prepared prior to the town meeting or that isn't the case presentation of the report yes yes we're, so we're, the goal I think of the last night was to have Josh present the report to the advisory board and the planning board in the first week of February okay but I had thought prior to the last town meeting that someone was working on a presentation oh yeah there was uh, thought it but we abandoned kind of okay. abandoned ship right. at that point once it was the IP okay so I think <laughs> so the hope with Josh is is that he make this presentation to the advisory board and then I'm guessing we didn't talk about this last night but he'd probably host the community meeting okay. again right and then that's and then be there in an advisory role so he's presenting the uh, b1 committees final recommendations no he's presenting the MAPC report, MAPC. Okay. MAPC report. Right. the uh, design guidelines were well done at the back mm -hmm. here too yeah. revised uh, he made a second pass at it and they came yeah. out much better didn't they, they did much better so yeah. if we were to make this public um, there probably should be some dis I don't know how you want to handle this it might be some sort of disclaimer is that that this is um, some to the fact that the town is taking this under advisement but that doesn't mean we're adopting everything in this that was yeah I was also talked about last so night, so. I'm yeah. I've been tasked with drafting a, a disclaimer yeah that the b1 committee will review so they'll accompany the report to say you know to, to make that clear right because I, I could very easily see 
people taking that right. to oh my gosh this is exact this is what we're doing mm -hmm. and that and that's not true that yeah. that's our that's a report that we've received that Correct. we're taking and I think part the, under advisement yeah, yeah. taking it under advisement and, and we kind of work our way that that path yes so I first started out to accept the report not accept the report you know there's no real rule of thumb whatever you want to feel right. comfortable doing we landed on that's the report we'll have the yeah. and, it'll, and it is what it is so it, it's reference yeah. correct yep. it, the other I think really um, significant change that, that happened last night was is um, our, our advisory board representative uh, left the committee last year and I think not having the advisory board representative on the committee hurt us in the end but so we have a new advisory committee member Susan Klein and she was there last night and had some great input uh, on history and 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 the, the role of the advisory board and, and some advice and on, on how to approach certain things and I think that was great it was a it was a good conversation so that should help us over the coming months yeah and definitely um, after town meeting and leading up to and then after town meeting I was being a little bit newer to the steward of processes here the advisory board as it was explained to me from a few residents that they really do look at the advisory board very strongly so if they're not completely engaged in you know keeping up with things going on in right. town their recommendation um, is significant you know how and so um, again something that's true very true, true. so it. rich is rich is going to make a special request to the advisory board to, for that meeting in February to have them show up so we got to schedule that with them right. but that's which I did put it out today we'll see um, one of the other things we did discuss last night um, which is kind of not directly in line with it but uh, the uh, assessor is going to come to the so I talked to Don today Clark the uh, director of assessing so he's going to come to the uh, B1 meeting in January because I think they wanted to have some discussion about you know just taxation in general that you know cr creating um, some more commercial opportunities how that can um, manage tax burden so so he's going to he'll come to right, the, right. Uh, on the meeting on January 6th it isn't clear to me from the schedule that you said that where in that schedule you feel that the B1 committee will have the draft of the new articles where where will that occur that will occur at the <laughs> committee meeting after the advisory board planning board presentation in February so by the end of February by the end of February okay prior to the public meeting in March so one just one add to that the idea is but going into that first meeting when the advisory board is having at least kind of mapped out a little bit where things are going to be modified as opposed to not just coming in with what we had what we had before mm, so yeah, yeah right there's no right? sense of having a meeting just correct right. right so you know this is these are the points so so, um, so you're trying to get their approval in the February meeting then you're going to go away as a group incorporate their feedback right and our feedback because it's yep. a joint meeting uh, yeah, yeah. And, and then is it is the sequence of approvals the same as it was before the last town meeting it goes from the planning board uh, I don't know if we went to select it did go to select yes yeah, yeah. Did, does it go through that process again uh, yeah we talked about that uh, just point of clarification it, we're not really seeking approval at this advisory board planning board feedback. meeting I would call it more of an educational okay this is our attempt to educate um, the advisory board and the planning board as to the developments of the project okay. and 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 the official issuance of the report and then look for feedback that can be incorporated into uh, our recommendations and should the selectmen be there as well because they actually chop things up yeah well um, we, th we thought about that only three of them. I'm sure we'll talk about that in January but um, yeah. to, to answer your question specifically once we get back to I think the goal is to get the advisory board that five weeks out um, we what we need to do is we need to figure out how, when to go to the select board when to go to the zoning board um, 
there's one other board that I'm leaving out, the health, the Board of Health. And the, okay. the planning board, you gotta come back yeah, to the planning board. And the planning board, board. <coughs> yeah, so. Um, <laughs> I have to come back. Yeah. Didn't forget the planning board, we're right here. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> correct. We'll map all that out in, yeah. you know, the end of March <clears throat> in April, so. Okay, and who knows, maybe by that time you, you'll come around to the fact that two and a half stories is the right height for the, yeah. for the uh, center of town. Yeah. So the um, I do I do know there are some uh, additional uh, things that need to be investigated. I will say points, which was um, did the discussion was about. So we have the 16 units per acre as a buy right, and their uh, then the special permit special permit provision brings it up higher if somebody wanted to apply for that through the planning board. There was discussions, uh, at least the notion of a cap. So there's a high-end cap to that. So I need to do a little more homework on that to report back. But that was at least something that was discussed, or at least explored. Um, and, and what does, and what, this is a rhetorical question, but what is your argument for accepting that um, or getting the folks who are opposed to that to accept it? You know, there's there's a one spokesperson who got up at the town meeting and and uh, and uh, was adamantly against any increase in density, as and change in zoning, as you may recall, made a lengthy speech um, and leads a group of people who believe in in leaving the zoning the way it is. And uh, so was he a developer? No, he wasn't. He's, oh. a, he's a resident. Well, uh, you know, so I, I think that well. So here's how I would how I would partly answer it, that again, question. Again, it's rhetorical. You don't have okay. to answer it now. Right. Well, prepping, so to speak. But yeah. I think one of the things we did talk about was that the vision in the master plan and what, you know, and is the goal of the committee. The goal of the committee, what is an active town center, needs to be really kind of articulated a little bit better. So then when you have the discussion about density, okay, what is, how does that translate out? Yeah, yeah. A little okay. bit, yeah, that's town good. center. Sure. That's so good. that's kind of what we did talk about a little bit yep. last night. Yep. So, yep. Um, and it, so I think, you know. Well, you know, I, I, I was just thinking out loud here that uh, you're doing a lot of outreach to people who, who uh, need to be influenced uh, in this positively along the way, and, and also to, to receive their input. You've got one public public meeting, right? One public meeting. Maybe you ought to reach out to some of those people who are uh, adamantly against this and get their input along the way, right? Well, just by chance, we were talking about this before the meeting, because there were there were actually groups of people, as you recall, from the town meeting. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That, that seemed like um, uh, one after another, and it, the if I had to condense down what they were against, it was any increase in their taxes, even down to a dollar. Uh, they were they were against any change that might result. That, that's that's what I read into that that night, and um, it seemed like that group arrived. There's at least ten, twelve of them strong. But they, most of them live in the same area, but they that that was their concern. So they, um, my discussion with Rich tonight was I think we can identify who those people were, and it might be good to get the the groups of people or individuals that mm -hmm. were concerned, and at least approach them and invite them <coughs> to at least one of the meetings or and, and then in, if you if you don't even want to come you can keep them informed of changes here's where we're going with this so that they're not acting like they're blindsided at the next town meeting yeah. well the the other addition last night was is the about the uh, committee meetings are now being uh, recorded your your committee, the B one meeting. The B one the B one committee meetings. Uh, okay. Okay. They they were not broadcast. Yeah. But it wasn't that broadcast. Well they weren't live broadcast. Yes, that's right. right. Okay. But they are recorded. They will be available to, for, to look at, sure. For, yeah. Okay. Public. I believe well, they are live. No, yeah. I went home and oh, was was it? It? I went home and tried to turn it on but it wasn't on. Ah. Well you may recall that when uh, when Peter stood up and, and made his speech when he sat down, he was widely applauded. There was quite yes. a number, quite a number yes. of folks who supported him, which suggests that there's a lot of folks who, who support his point of view. And uh, I think you're right. It, it, you don't want to blindside him if you can. Anyway, that's that's my two cents worth. Well, we sounds like we weren't <laughs> live last night. I thought we were live, so I guess. You were. I was here. I didn't. 
No, nope. we're getting the nod that we were we she were said alive. We were alive. So. I looked at station 42, 43. Uh oh. I looked at all of them. I did not see it. We need some text support 45. for Gary. 45. <laughs> so you were on the wrong channel. Yeah, go high enough. 42, you gave 43, up too 44. Soon. I gave up. <laughs> all right. Public service announcement. 45 <laughs> next time. But so we are uh, so being mindful of that to to to, yeah, okay. to be. Okay. Sure. I think Gary's on to something though. I think. Um, we should. Yeah. Yeah, we just weren't sure if uh, maybe it was unlike our meeting here where people identified by name and address. But um, so I'm not. Uh, I've got to do a little homework. Yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm not sure if we know exactly. Well, I mean, I just uh, speaking freely, right, you know, all of these meetings are public meetings. Any yes. of these people could come to any of these meetings. And but they're look, saying they don't and, know I mean, about them. We, look, we, we, I'm speaking for the B1 <laughs> committee, need. Our goal is to inv include as many people as we can in the development of these recommendations. So well, one of the things to do then is to publish that list of meetings. Yeah, I think that's I think that's in the works. Yeah. Okay. Um, but that being said, I mean, talk to these people, invite them to these meetings. I mean, it. I at least know yeah. one person in the group of ten. Yeah, invite. So I will invite them. But I, but I think the issue issues, if you will, are broader than just yes. the tax issues. Yes. I think there's a group of people who just don't want any increase in in, uh, in density in the town. Uh, town they don't understand it. Well, they don't understand the benefits of it, and they don't understand that it's coming anyway. Well, that so. may be true too, but the, the, for whatever set of reasons, they just don't want it. Yes. And, uh, yeah. You may never be it. able to change their mind, but at least as if you publish right. this, as Aaron says, it gives them a chance to come and, and see. Yeah, I think we, we did talk about, I talked about a lot of stuff, so I can't remember exactly, but we do kind of want to kind of revisit the idea that, you know, I think oftentimes people say no growth, you know, no growth, but essentially that's not, that's not real in the sense of, how the last 20 years Norfolk has grown 20 percent and it's projected it, to grow 20 percent in the next 20 years and that's not and that's really the the whole framework of how we are as a country I mean it's it's based on a growth model so right you know it so it's really not a real thing well, it's growing well, about you know, not, not everywhere in the country is growing I, I, everywhere I, in Boston is growing no I understand <laughs> that but I mean the idea of you know the notion <laughs> we're going to stay status quo and not I mean you know Right. We're not going to stay, so we need to plan for it. That's right. what we're trying to do. The greater yeah. metropolitan region of Boston just passed 5 million wow. people. That's amazing. Yeah, wow. there's only 4,400 people, people right. in here when I moved in. 4,400? 4, 4,400. 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, wow. Not counting the prisoners. They're not counting the Indians, which were still negotiating treaties with at the time. Right? <laughs> <laughs> your point, Chad? Right. I, I totally agree. I mean, where I grew up has it probably changed a heck of a lot. And, you know. But yeah. thank you for your Change work. is coming, so we should yeah. plan for it. Yeah. yeah. It's, it was a good meeting. Whether we want it or not, it's yeah. kind of coming. This is also right. a great area. Are we adjourning? To be I don't know. Rich, any other oh, items sorry, that you no. want to talk uh, about? I didn't go bust it. Go home. All right. Anything else? You want yeah, a few other things, but no, that's right. Yeah. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we got to sign. Oh, we got to sign these things. Sign. Yeah. That's yeah. it. We'll sign on the way out. On the way out. All right. All right. Motion adjourned. Yeah, entertain that motion. Anyway, second. Second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. 10-20, not bad.